talking yeah. about. Yeah. Red crust. After you're talking about eye crusties. Yeah, that's a transition. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Well, we're back. Oh, no, sorry, Mira. We're not repeating what we just <laughs> talked about. I apologize. That no. was a sin against humanity. No. Uh, we should not have been discussing it. No. Uh, anyways, welcome back. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for joining us at the Black Aurora again after three weeks. <laughs> nice to see you again, Mira. Um, it feels like it's been an eternity, uh, but we are back for another admittedly short session today uh, as we need to wrap up what our main primary team is doing before they take off their uh, three-month voyage to Bardest, and then we're going to switch over to B-team, the secondary team over in the Holy Land to figure out what they're doing. But before we get into that, Last time we left off with this crazy group, uh, you guys were in pitched combat with an exarch of the Order deep underground below the city of Valertana. Uh, you guys had gone there to resolve an issue for uh, the Valertane Conservatory that were, they were trying to save the plants of the city uh, from this uprooting, all to get some Aurora marks for yourselves from a mission uh, from the inscriber over at uh, the Dane capital uh infiltrating the abbey you came to meet with uh the abbess uh, anva who was an actually an exarch for the order uh who took you to her murder chamber to sacrifice a couple of you guys as your grand plan it actually worked pretty well you cut straight through to the heart of my quest <laughs> completely bypassing some like cribbis stuff and some <laughs> potential optional fights it was you know hey i liked the initiative um the battle was hard fought, uh, very, very tense back and forth, teleporting across, <laughs> constantly luring Anva back and forth, some walls of force to direct uh, you know, the fight. Uh, there's a lot of counterspelling, a lot of fire and heat, or attempt at it, and a lot of counterspelling of fireballs. Uh, it was a, a good fight, and it was one that got the party to level 12, finally. After the battle was over, uh, you guys reported your success, went back, collected uh, your young, uh, what's his name, Alton, uh, from the conservatory, using the rescued sister of the order that you got. Um, she managed to convince him to go back to the capital with you guys, and you returned to his sister, Emerus, the inscriber, reported a job well done, uh, found out that... Alten had been corrupted a little bit by the power of animosity, this strange cult that's been going around. Cured him of that, got him to kind of cool off on this freedom-fighting you know, activist thing, and received your reward of Aurora Marks. Uh, everyone has set on what marks they took, right? Everyone got their one new mark? Yes. Okay. Never. Good, because I was still up in the air for a couple people, I think, at the end of last session. Yeah. Uh, but with these new powers you've now gained and the new level up you all felt very invigorated as you headed off to your next destination you i believe met up with Naren, and then regrouped at Silben's uh dwelling over in the forest to then head to the port port dane where you encountered uh the ship you're going to be taking to bardest uh the previous vessel of the claim keeper that you killed a few days ago you know just desserts, earned rewards, whatever you want to call it. Your trophy ship. Yeah. Um, Narkushan, using her connections, got you guys the access to the ship. It's a very fast, very efficient ship. And it will also grant you less trouble And when you arrive to Bardest, because you'll be arriving in one of their own ships. So mm -hmm. that'll be good. Um, we left off with you guys arriving at the port. Uh going to the ship, which I'll, I'll pull up the uh, ship map for you guys, just so you guys can see what you guys are going to be spending the next journey on. Uh, it is a dark iron ship uh, with bands of wood, uh, so it floats. You know, it's not just pure iron, um, but it's mostly metal, you notice. It is a mostly metallic, very large ship covered in large iron spikes with these large folding retractable blades on the sides of the ship that seem to have some sort of mechanical release to spring lock, like, out, to to, to launch out. As uh, Narkashan explains, this is used for hunting sea monsters, typically. Uh, this vessel is used by the uh, Orion's hunters in any kind of 
sea monster or dragon that they have to hunt out in open waters. It even comes equipped with a nice carrying cage for any creatures you find. Um, instead of cannons, it has a harpoon ballista, like the one that was used against Ilarin in the desert. Mm. Uh, and the front of the ship is also equipped with a 120 foot long flamethrower. Mm. So you guys have a battle ready, terrifying dark ship that doesn't really fit most of the party, but hey, <laughs> I think oh, Naren. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. And Q, I'm in that Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I feel like it. Mm. I think Naren steps on the ship at the dock and is like, ah, oh, this is um, uncomfortable in a number of ways, but <laughs> I suppose I can't complain about a free trip. Mm. It's also the safe, probably the safest we could mm. possibly yeah. get. Uh, Absolutely. Mike, so is this where we're about to see? Okay, well, thanks for cutting into that. I'll get to that, AJ. Hi. What, what do you... Yes, okay, fine. Since AJ's ready to jump the gun on something, uh, Avosi will talk to... Seriously, AJ. <laughs> we'll talk to the group. Um, as you guys are getting ready to set sail on your new journey, um, he approaches you guys. Um, so, uh, I've been, uh, thinking about it recently, and I was, um, I was talking to Narkushan about this, uh, you know, going to Bardest thing, mm. um, you know, the country that, uh, hunts my kind down for fun, and, uh, you know, uh, doesn't allow teleportation, and, you know, um, I'm mm. not going is kind of the, the general thing I wanted to get across to you guys, um, I hope that's okay, because I really don't want to go there. Um, so I, I, that's also why I, uh, I bought you guys that, um, that bangle, the Abdurist's bangle, so that way, like, it's a little bit of me left behind. Mm. Um, you'll have that to help. Um, and I think I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go join the Aura Guardians. Um, I think you suggested that day, mm. a couple days ago, and... I think I can do some good there. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I know that I really, I mean, looking at this ship. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, What's wrong with it? It just needs a little bit of paint, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if this is an example of what the people there are like, mm. I will not be welcome. <laughs> so, anyways, um, okay. I'm going to just draw myself a teleportation circle before I enter a country where that could get me beheaded. Um <laughs> But um, it's been uh, it's been fun fighting vampire demons and going into trapped tombs and you know getting um, almost killed you know multiple times, times yeah and... contracting the merc that was the highlight I think I'm gonna have to go and uh, figure out what to do with that uh -huh. um, I mean you have some good stories right for other people now he like stares off into the horizon a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got got stories that'll stick with me. That's that's for sure. Um, stories, trauma, well. same thing. Yeah, what's the difference, really, right? <laughs> so. Okay. Well, well. If that's your decision. We can't stop you. So. Um. Yeah. Um, please I pat uh, you on the back, and I'm like, well. <laughs> Thanks for saving our hide a lot of the times. So. Uh, that's the least I could do for keeping me alive a lot of the times. Um, <laughs> he will um, return to the party, the Amulet of the Sentinel. He's not going to take that with him. Uh, um, Megan, you mark in that? Sure, you got it. You yeah, somebody marked that the Amulet of the Sentinel is in a bag. Uh, he didn't really have any other items that would, I think, need to be... So the bangle is slotless, right? Correct. It is not attunement. You can just wear the bangle, and I think I marked which version he bought. I could. It be was wrong. the mid version, I believe. The mid version, I believe, which was like seven. Let me check Griffin saddlebag real quick. I'll have to make a handout for it. After his bangle, yeah, it is a seventy-five hit point uh, shield. Okay. So um, it can't be regenerated, but it is basically 75 temp hit points that yeah. just like. It doesn't, uh, my mechanical question, it doesn't like give you temp in that you couldn't get temp no, from other sources. No, you can still have sources. temp with it. You can okay. have temp with it. It's a separate entire thing. Um, 
it's basically a barrier that has a set number of hit points depending on its rarity. Once it's gone, it's gone. But and you can take it off and put it on whatever. So somebody could wear it, take 10 points of damage, take it off, give it to somebody else. It basically just has 75 hit points. And then once that's done, it's just a bangle. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh. If Perry is not going to put it on, I'm going to slap it on myself. No, you can take it. Here, I'm moving it back. I was adding it to the bag because... Okay, I'm going to put it on myself if there. you don't. You have it. Because you're... Yeah, they're really squishy, but you have the sipping have, and the phoenix plate. I have the, the mm -hmm. potion ring, too. Yeah, the, the potion yeah. ring and the... So I'm just gonna yeah. slap that onto myself. I don't think I had it written down. I won't confirm. Uh, which bag was no, it No, I have a feather token. Uh... <clears throat> Are you adding it to your bag now? Like, the details? Me? I can put it on my character sheet, or what do we- how do yeah, we- I'm working on- I'm, I'm, I'm working on making a, a, a handout for it. Okay, alright. One second. I'm gonna make a resource on my, like, side mm -hmm. for it. Um, you said this version- was it 120 or 90 for this version? Uh, I'm trying to remember how much he spent on it. I think it- I think it's the rare version, which is 75. Okay. Because he spent like what six thousand on it. Oh so sounds correct. I remember it was a pretty penny. Which would be the rare version, because very rare would be like sixty thousand. Yeah, which is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's seventy-five hit points. Okay. Need to grab the. <laughs> Okay. But yeah. So I'll put this in all players and I'll have edit I'll let all players edit it if you wanted to like edit the Yeah, because it can be um, passed around. Total value. Correct. It's it's a group item, that's why Items. He bought it. Items. <laughs> what was that from? What was that doing something? Items. Items. It was a stream was that was or something. Me doing a playthrough of your oh RPG my Maker God, game. That's right. Yeah, oh, me and Becky were doing. I love that. And I RP. sounded like I was like malfunctioning. It was yeah. 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 Anyways, anyway. that was fun. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah. Uh. Yep. Yeah, so Avosi see. Uh. Heads out before you guys leave the port. Um. We'll, we'll give him hugs and say of bye. Of course, of course. There's a, a, a farewell. Uh, he'll see you guys again, obviously. You know, he's not leaving forever, but he's just not going to the horrible continent of barbarians that hate magic. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's reasonable. Obviously. Because that's he what is... he is, is magic. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So is Perry, but she doesn't really have a choice. Yeah, Avosi had the benefit of a choice in this matter, is the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Given the choice, I, <laughs> I like you guys not that much. Not that much. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Plus, uh, I think it was Mira or Medea that last session actually said uh, she joined the Aura Guardians, and it was like, huh, hmm. yeah, I should get paid to do this kind of stuff instead of yeah. like just doing it for free. Yeah, <laughs> out of the kindness of his I'd heart. I'd be most welcome. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, so. Yeah. So Vosi heads back to uh, Renati via uh, teleportation circle. Um, the party. Uh, you guys probably spend a bit of the the, the remainder of the day uh, waiting for them to stock up the ship. Um, you get introduced. Narkashan introduces you to the ship's captain, uh, Captain Erdra. Erdra. Er Erdra. Is that the Erdra. orc? It's the orc. Erdra. Uh, half orc. Ah. Uh, half orc man. Ah. Um, okay, okay. He's boof. He, uh, Narkashan, uh, <laughs> explains to you, um, this is, uh, Captain Udra, who is the only member of our crew that is from the Orion's Hunters. The rest are Bardestians that were on standby at the port. Uh, President Dane has allowed us to take them back with us. Unfortunately, the, um, actual crew of this ship is currently still in the desert. So, mm. unless we wanted mm. to go and have those survivors of our fight come on the on board, <laughs> I don't know if you'd be interested in having Torum and Plasar, you know. I do not think they would like 
you know, the people who no, killed No, probably the not. And they may have problems with your challenge to claim. So I figured this will have to do. But I assure you, any Bardestian hand is welcome on this ship. Ooh. They know what they're doing, okay. Yes. That's for me. Which brings us to the route, which we all, out of character, obviously, have already yeah. decided on. Uh, but this Ooh. is the point where... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big yeah, so there's a small bit of small bit of the DM yeah. going okay, but oh. all good. Uh, <laughs> between the two routes you guys have, we're back on the the work in progress world map. I, I'm not satisfied with some of the di the dimensions of certain lands, but okay, it's all good. Um, you guys are currently situated down the bottom right at Port Dane. Your mm -hmm. goal is to reach Devest Orlan, the capital city of Bardest, and where Zephyrdona lives. So. There were two routes presented to you. You guys could, A, take this path you see here that someone is charting out, which is pretty much a straight shot to uh, Port Orland, the main port of the, of the, the capital. Um, the only problem with that route is it's a three-month trip. Very, very, very long boat trip. And there's a small bit of risk going between the Holy Land and uh, Calcifel because these two nations are at war with the Dane and Bardest still. So uh, you guys obviously have connections in the Holy Land. If you have a Holy Land ship up here, you guys could probably negotiate it out. Calcifelian ship with, you know, Tark being in control, not as easy. So there might be chance of naval conflict uh, if you go that route. Um but that's the only real risk, other than stormy seas or whatnot. The alternative route that the party has decided against is to skirt the edge of the Dane Republic, travel off of the actual world map, cross what's known as the Boundary Ocean, this massive expanse of open sea, filled with sea monsters, horrible storms, and a lot of risks, and then emerge on the other side, passing through the Karanis Isles, which is pirate-infested, and to Port Peritol, which is not really your destination, but is only a couple day journey on foot from Devest Orland. Your party, understandably, chose the safe route. Damn. All good. Yeah. Mir Mira, the loop's Damn. not worth it if we die. I know. Yeah. I agree I'm with okay. it. <laughs> but I'm going to do one the challenges. No. Actors. It makes sense. It would have cut the time in half of travel, admittedly. The, the, the risky route would have been half as long, but it would have been risky and all sorts of things. But by choosing the safe and slow route, you guys do actually gain access to one of the most rare resources in all of Dungeons & Dragons time. You guys have three <laughs> months to devote to whatever you'd like uh, with minimal interruption. So at this time, uh, and I'm going to probably leave it up to you guys to discuss this or if you have anything you'd like to ask we're kind of going into a time skip scenario here i'm not gonna push us three months ahead yet but um at this point unless there's anything else you guys wanted to do in the port or while still in the dane i will need to ask what is your goal for the three month trip for each of you to accomplish and so. depending on what it is there might be roles involved uh me and becky have one thing that deals with each other um and then i think each of us have a few things we had in mind um the first being that mira and medea have gotten vague hints about uh something we need to do like together with our weapons and these um runes right. Yes, you, uh, you've you been told by um, Carl, <laughs> Cariel, the Carl. forge in uh, Numenati, uh, the old um, Aurora elite blacksmith, that your weapons are relics of divinity. Uh, the sword of kite or a bow infused with the power of Amida, and they are activated by the divine, which you both have small pieces of in the runes on your weapons from the, uh, the shards you've been getting. Um... You've only been given, I think, the information that together they have some better power than they do separately. But there's really nothing what you could you could take from that. We want, um, given the kind of given the kind of ship this is, I'm sure there's some kind of battle training uh, yeah, uh, practice. There are, this ship is rather large, and there are multiple levels, and there is one entire floor dedicated to. Uh, I, I actually meant to mention this before. There are two things on that floor. One, there is a lot of training area. And two, there is a fight ring 
the fighting ah, ring for the people to keep themselves entertained, yes. as Bardestians do. Um, so you guys have plenty of opportunity to train and test yourselves as to your heart's content. Um, so wanting to try uh, kind of a blanket statement, try different things to see if we can figure out what the okay. hell they were talking about. Also, right, if so it matters when touching our things together, I can now cast sending and would like to attempt to send a message to Jing. Jing, okay. Okay, uh, we'll start with you guys then, because you guys have a very clear idea of what you guys want to try to accomplish. Um, okay, so... You are going to attempt to cast sending. Where did you get sending from? We leveled up. Leveled up. Oh, you leveled you got, up. Oh, I got that. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Oh, two people in the party with sending. Then that's good. Yeah, I had to. Oh, level two. Like, yes. I could. I could prepare <laughs> another <laughs> spell for the day. So. Okay. And because I'm about uh, to. What would you like to say to Jing, uh, one of the servitor angels of Ioma Day? Didn't think this far ahead. Um, <laughs> mm. Three weeks. I know. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, I get that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, you're the spiritual mumbo jumbo one, sister. <laughs> well, let's start it out as usual. Hey, Zhang. Hi, Zhang. <laughs> okay. okay. Um. I. Uh, hmm. We. If. I'm right next to you. You're still <laughs> present. I am present. Um. Mm. We. Okay. Oh, we. I'm thinking. This is in my head. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> yes, it is. Perry makes it look so easy. <laughs> okay, so she's like, I already wrote out what I'm gonna freaking ask for people. Um, Perry has like a long like receipt yeah. just folding out of like sendings for the ninety days. Maybe. Yes, Technos.exe has. I feel crashed. like that's most of today's session is gonna be what you guys do for three months. Um. We were told about a way to bring forth your power or your energy, perhaps. Can you help us? Is that it? I think that's like 24, so. Okay. Okay. You've never really communicated with Jing I think once they one Jing time. spoke to you one time when giving you the runes at the beginning of your two's introduction yeah, yeah so I kind of like oh. basically was like there is no one successor worthy of Camille's power but two could have the same potential etc since then you have not talked to Jing correct <laughs> it's been a while it's been a while it's been, a while. It's been, it's been months minimum You, you feel a reply, but you do not hear words. You feel a sensation of, of images and thoughts flood your mind in response. As Jing is a bit of an esoteric creature, you feel sensations of... The weapons are extensions of a higher power, tools of the divine. Only as powerful as the faith of the one wielding them. Mm. A sword that takes and a bow that gives can be used in concert to do great things or evil. Hmm. 
And that's about as much as you get from Jing. It is more of this sylvan, yeah, yeah. esoteric yeah. bullshit. Did you feel it too? Did you feel it? Like... Yeah, you messaged an angel. <laughs> I did, I did. <sighs> Alright, well, given, given, given take, uh, we're just going to have to try some things, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll make this sort of a skill challenge then. <laughs> Thanks. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna need. <laughs> I don't I'm gonna need four it. successes before two failures for this. Oh, it's gonna be a little okay. bit hard. Great. <laughs> I'd like you guys to decide what you're gonna try to roll. You can't roll the same thing twice. Okay. You have to explain to me how it's going to apply to your training as to what you're trying with this. Okay. <laughs> so whoever would like to go first, you need four successes versus two failures. All right. I will well, open a notepad real quick. So skill checks. So it has to be skill, skill checks. checks. Yes. Right. I I think on <laughs> the <laughs> nature side of things with my bow, the bow has this like life essence within it. I will it, also say. And... Your explanation will determine the DC. If sure. you have a very good reason for why you're doing yeah. this skill, I will lower the DC because it makes more sense. If it's a very Sorry. bullshit reason. Right. I'm going to do acrobatics because I do a lot of flips and dodges. Okay, great. DC 30. You know? <laughs> great. I might make that. No. Uh, but yeah, so nature, you're saying. Um, the nature, the, the bow itself, just the nature of it. And I have gotten like the ability to give with giving like uh healing others okay. at range and everything please give me a nature check I, you can flare for advantage i mean uh, i will say for the intents and purposes of this you don't have to track decay because this is happening over the course of a month and you have a white aura on board you have two actually okay so just you can get advantage on these rolls actually you know what because it's over the course of a month <laughs> I'm going to say it's just a straight roll because this is more of a, com a cumulative thing. Yeah, that's fair. Than one time. So just one straight right. roll. <sighs> that is one success. Oh. See, I don't even have enough skills <laughs> to warrant this, sister. <laughs> ah! Technically speaking, one person could do all the rolls if you'd like, if that one person just has the epiphany. But this is between the two of you, if there's anything you both think you can contribute. I'll give... It could be raw stat, like you can do an int check or a strength check, you could do a skill check. I'll give Medea a chance. If there's anything Ooh. you think you would do. Oh, I don't know how they would apply. Like... Well... Have, you could always just... survival, I was but... Gonna say, if you... I, I'm gonna try to survive my sister's attacks because she's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Or maybe all of the hardships I've gone through and all the things I've had to do in life. Maybe I'm having a flashback. Okay, okay. Like Give me a survival my... check. Sure. <laughs> I don't know, because I only have four in this. So, let's hope. Yeah, no. <laughs> that is a success. So good. Uh... The way, oh, you, you, you turned it around with using your hardships. Uh, you feel like the nature of your sword might be amplified because you've had a lot taken from you. Oh. There's a connection there. Mm. So I, also I, say, I, I, uh, I also say, Mira, with looking into the nature of your bow, and you mentioned it as well, you lowered your DC dramatically, you have already given power. The, the bow has the ability to give to others. This is the exact mm. dual nature of kite and a mite, of one who takes and one who gives. Mm. All right, that is two successes, zero failures. I need two more successes from you guys. Yeah. Uh, That's a pretty good start, though. It's a pretty good start. Oh, my. But now you've gotten the good ones out of the way. <laughs> yes, I've gotten my best yeah, one out of the way. Um, I'm trying to think of how that one would apply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this. How can I... Hmm. Oh, that's a stretch. No. Uh... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Be creative. Be, be creative. Be, 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 be creative. creative. <laughs> <Stop playing. laughs> 
Uh, uh, thank you, Mira. I mean, uh, my own, my other best one is per- well, my really good one is perception. Maybe. <sighs> no, go ahead. This is how have, are you gonna? <laughs> I have to pertain it to my weapon in our training. Yeah, though. right. That's the yeah, that That's is the, the point. Hard part. Um. Because I'm trying to think of Arcana, but aside from the weapons are magical, like <laughs> you got nothing. Um, um I, I thought um, I'm making a skill check, but I don't know how to apply it to the uh, You could just go straight, and it would just be a really high DC. Yeah. But the more you explain to me how you're incorporating it, the lower the DC gets. Question. Yes. Um, because there's a lot of similarities that we did not intend with these characters. Um, it really is. I'd like to also make this known. This was not an intentional thing in character creation. These two <laughs> having some sort of parallel to my gods of my world, but it fucking worked. Uh, which leads into my question of how much does Mira know about... About what? Uh, Amita and... Wait. You could do a religion check. I know. Again. But boy, that's low. <laughs> question. Sure. Another question. Can I guide myself? <laughs> no. Because it's again for the course of a one month of a three month endeavor. This is a cumulative okay. thing. But before you roll, what are you trying to do? This could help you with the DC. What are you um, trying to determine with so the religion check? What are you trying to think about? So, like, trying to think of back on, like, okay, obviously this is weird, and we and my sister kind of embody them, but somehow we found ourselves in a place where, like, is it exactly, like, was... I know Amida was a druid, so Amida... Mm -hmm. Do I, like, fully align with Amida and the giving nature that we are Getting possibly... philosophical. Yeah, well, like like, we're possibly aware of the, like, fact that she granted, like, I forget how many f***ing wishes at the end of last campaign. Yeah, um, she did. She gave a lot of gifts out, a lot of boons. Um, so, is, like, how, how aligned are we with the sisters? And then, to that effect, is there anything I know of, like, their, I guess the best word would be abilities that they had during their lives? Okay. All right. Give me a religion check. Oh, no. That's not good. Here we go. <laughs> it's not That's good. Failure. Yep. <laughs> that will be one failure. Yep. But for what I... Uh, well, for what you get from that, though, is you feel like, and maybe this is something to learn from with this failure, is if you inquire into that more with somebody who might have those answers, you might you might find the secret to this whole thing. Maybe that's the part you're, you've been missing, is the understanding of Kite and Amita themselves. You might need to talk to someone about that. So, even if this whole thing does fail, which you need one, two more successes before one more failure. Like what? <laughs> you at least might have a step in the right direction now. Figuring out how you two could possibly emulate the t the, the two sisters. All right, that's the third roll. Two successes, one failure. <laughs> I need two more successes before one more failure. <laughs> before one more failure. <laughs> Keep in mind, this does not mean you'll never unlock the ability. You're just not doing it now. Yeah. yeah. Over the three month trip. Uh, I can't. Uh, all my stuff is fighting uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> Acrobatics ooh, and athletics ooh. and then uh, intimidation. Oh, Hattie, boy. Uh, can you still people. talk to your close personal friend? Oh, uh, yeah. I was. Weird. Um. What is Soren? Still a question. Is it uh, a stone or is it uh, sending? Sending. Ah, right. Okay. Um. We'll just factor it into her monthly quota. <laughs> <laughs> I only have written down like five. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, that's actually not bad. Not bad. Yeah, considering the amount That will of be time. the entirety of this session as you guys on this boat, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it might exactly. use your day's worth of sending. Um, but... A 
Don't you have sending now? I do, oh, but I can I not. reach? Can I reach him? Because oh, he's on true. a different plane. No, five yeah, percent sending, sending, sending goes well. That's true. There is that five yeah. percent chance of failure. Yeah. Didn't, didn't they sort of have like that thing? That... No, I, I think I think yeah, you guys can now because you you met Asorin, right? Mira? Yes, you were there. I met yeah, him. you can meet him. You you can you can message him. Oh. He's he's got an open line to you guys basically. Okay. It was only while in okay. Zazant that Perry was the only one because she had the power of an apostle. Right, yeah. right. But we'll, we'll base sending to this a 5% chance of failure if they're Correct. on a different plane. And Asorin, I believe when you met him, told you that he's got something set up with the Divinity Drive to allow okay. you guys to message now. Okay, so now that that Yeah, so you can message gone. him because you've met him. God. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just talk to one of the gods. Yeah, the yeah. only one, the only one left. Technically, I can send uh four times a day because I have a fourth level slot, but no fourth level spell sure. because multi-classing is weird. Mm. I can upcast. Um. Hello, I saw it in. <laughs> I know, not Peria this time. <laughs> Uh, I I had some questions I wanted to ask about uh, Amita and uh, Kite. 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 Thank you, God. Kite. Kite. <laughs> um, Only the two most known names in my entire yeah. campaign. That's fine. <laughs> who, yeah, fine. Who they were in life and how they got it, got it. <laughs> you really need to be better there's a, a momentary pause before oh uh hello sorry wasn't expecting that that could be a long conversation do you have more specifics they were complicated people. Their connection giving and taking how they ah, uh, what's the word? Not uh, not coexisted. Um, cooperated. Coordinated. Cooperated, interacted uh, with each other. <laughs> okay. Um I'm going to roll a D thirty to see how much his sword can really Cram. hone in 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 in, in, a, in a in ascending, yeah. Because he he he's amazing, so he's like, yeah, whatever about these sisters. Yeah, whatever about these sisters. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a two yeah. on D thirty. It sure is. We want low. <laughs> we, want, no. we wanted low, no, right? On this one. <laughs> um. Sorry, I feel like this would be easier in person. Sending is limited. Um. Oh, stop they... by sometime. <laughs> we can talk. You okay. don't look happy. <laughs> no, it's um unfortunately it sending yes. being what it is. Yeah. Uh mm. and you know, at twenty five words a, a message, it's hard to tell stories about gods. Um yeah. Did he say anything? <sighs> shit. <laughs> what what shit? Is Mira aware of the crook? And what its significance is. Yes. Yeah, you absolutely should be. And Naren is on the, the ship with you with the crook. Okay. The, uh, go... the Bartoon's crook. I'll grab Naren. Okay, um... yeah. Naren's probably lounging around somewhere trying to figure out how to be comfortable on a ship made of steel and death. Yeah. Trying to find a pillow somewhere. <laughs> yeah, trying to make one. She's trying to, dru she's trying to druid craft out of the, like, dark planks of wood be like come on some color just a little um, bit of life <laughs> ne ne she, she, like, she's propped a tiny she's propped a tiny flower and one of the barbarian like deckhand steps on it she's like son of a <sighs> ne ne oh uh yes mira 
Uh, this what can I do for you? Maybe a uh, seem out of left field. Um, with that, can you talk to Bartoon? With what the staff? The the clock. oh no no no. Uh, well, uh, I haven't tried it yet, but um, Morgana apparently was able to speak to him once. Ah. There was, uh, I believe she said there was something she did when she was in Zizant with uh, those two. Um, it was terribly reckless, and it had profound lasting effects. She, um, according to what she reported, poured every last bit of her aura into the crook and died, but was brought back within seconds. But during that small window of time, her consciousness was inside the crook, apparently speaking with some aspect of Bartoon, learning some secrets. It's been fascinating to think about, but I don't know if I have the courage to commit suicide, even temporarily. No, that um, that is very That's reckless. Valid. <laughs> um, That's valid. <laughs> I don't suppose you know a lot about Kite and Amita. Depends what you mean. Their... Their relationships as sisters, I just chime in, I'm like, I'm just like, oh. Go along. Like, well, did they get along? Did they fight on that? <laughs> I only know from what I've studied and what my mother has told me passed down. Uh, as, as you two probably know, I am distant descendant of Bartoon. Um, very distant, but something we've always had as a matter of pride. <laughs> from what I know, uh, Kite was always a very forward individual very strong of will mm -hmm. um, i believe she was always um what's the, what's the word I, I i don't mean to ever blaspheme but um headstrong a bit stubborn i believe <laughs> stubborn. Okay. and um always assured that she was on the right path even when she may not have been which is what led to some mistakes but she didn't Despite what I know everyone has been saying recently about Kai, she didn't always make mistakes. I mean, she founded a lot of the institutions we have nowadays, a lot of the abilities we know, uh, the Aurora Elite, the Aurora Marks themselves, well, those were technically Bartoon's doing, but there was a collaboration as far as I know. Um, she was a great leader of her time, a visionary and protector of Elkast for what it's worth. But she was known to um, be very possessive of the inventions and ideas of the people. She, uh, I believe, um, I believe most of her great works, these initiatives, were actually created by others, and she took them for herself. A little mm. selfish, to be honest. Amita, on the other hand, um, always admonished her sister for this, to my understanding. But despite always saying, you know, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, whatever, she um, never got involved directly. Amita was very passive. Mm. She stayed far from her sister for a long time, keeping her at arm's reach. I don't know. I don't know what their relationship would have been like, but I can't imagine they got along very well. Mm. Mm. They were very different in nature. One who took whatever they found interesting and made it their own, and another who wanted to give and wanted to help, but never seemed to step out. Mm. I don't know if she was afraid or... I, I could not begin to understand the nature of the gods fully. No, not that they are gods. That's a misunderstanding. They're the next closest thing we have, though. That's what you're all doing, though, is trying to find the new gods, right? 
That, yes, that, that still feels weird to say. I still can't even wrap my head around that. Um, uh, I know we're all probably bored as hell on this boat, but why did you ask? Is there anything more uh, specific I can help with? Well, yes. Um, and I'll just explain what me and my sister have been trying to do and what we've been told. Oh, okay. Runes! <laughs> Fade to black. Oh. Fade to black. I oh. see. I, um... I'm not much of a swordsmith or anything. I don't really know if I'd recognize Kite's sword unless it was right in front of me, I guess. That's, um... Hmm. Well, uh... I'll have Naren do a roll. Let's see. We'll have Naren do a religion check. Okay. Hey, can 23. I count as one of our successes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well. Mm. But we might get From some... what I understand about you two, you're already very coordinated, correct? You fight <laughs> together. Yes. <laughs> very long time. If these weapons are in some way meant to emulate the abilities of Kite and Amita, which, after you've described it, I do see uh, a bow that can give life and a sword that can take magic, those are very similar to the sisters. Pretty cool. <laughs> Perhaps there's a way that the two can be integrated in one attack. Perhaps take from one, give to another. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, uh, 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 you don't have. Let me go find somebody. Uh, Patty, where's Patty? Where's Patty? Where's Patty? I'm just reading my book. Hey, Patty. Oh, hi, <laughs> Hi. Um, just could we borrow you for a moment? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um. So I want to go uh, uh, go down to like the training area. Sure. Um, I would I'm like on the to. the train right now. This will. This will. She's reading a book. Probably as far as skill, I'm thinking Arcana. But here's okay. what I'm thinking. Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna tell Peria to, uh, fire a. Painful, lethal, like spell. Eldritch even if, blast. even if it's just Eldritch Blast, <laughs> or um, even if it's just yes, yes, even if it's just <laughs> Eldritch Blast. Just damage. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Have what might is to have her do that. Mm. Becky uses her sword to counterspell it, mm. then okay. try to take it from the sword. And move it to the bow, mm -hmm. and then fire it through the bow at the target. Okay, that's my really out there idea. Put it into your bow. <laughs> so if when you explain this to me, I'll be like, how do I how do I do that though? Okay. Uh, it's a good question. I will need. I mean, I can release it, but I will need an Arcana check with advantage because of Naren's explanation and the Peria's assistance. Cool. Peria, what spell are you casting for this? Um, I feel like my most targeted damage spell is Eldritch Blast. Okay, so... I don't want to explode your bow. Well, it, it would That's be the problem. fine. Are you sure? That's fine. I'm not very confident about that, sister. I don't really have money. I know. Oh, I was like looking at my spell list. Like, <laughs> You're not really a damage dealer beyond Two. Eldritch Blast. No, but I no. know Eldritch Blast is something that it works so, well. Yeah. So Mira, uh, please give me a with advantage uh, Arcana check. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Natural eighteen okay. for twenty-five. Okay. That is the third success. Ah. As Peria, you fire off this Eldritch Blast. Medea, you counterspell it, absorb it into the sword. There is a moment where Mira feels 
her arrow infuse with power. And then it sputters. Oh. And you feel like there's a step you're missing, but you are on the right track to what I was planning. Oh, so close. Well, well, well. Let's do it again! Oh, <laughs> you have... This this roll is it. I need one success before one ah. failure. Sweat. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, all right, so we almost had it. Um, perhaps. Uh, well, I'm taking her spell. All right, I, I have. Giving it to you. Yes. Perhaps you need to... We need to be touching, or perhaps... We need to be activating our runes at the same time, maybe? Perhaps we need to activate a rune, or... There was a mention of divine power being a requirement for or this. Or sacrifice a use of one of the runes. Maybe not necessarily using it, but maybe... Like, what kind of check would you like to try with this? Perception! No. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to say perception for something. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, um, I mean... If uh, you can figure out what you're trying to perceive as you practice this, it's possible. To see if any of the runes light up, or... Well, I definitely think using the runes definitely yeah. makes sense for part you guys of can it. collaborate yeah. because this is the last roll so figure out for sure what you want to try to go for um mm. 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 i liked mira's comment this is cool yes yeah no, up further, she was like, intimidate it to work. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> intimidate the weapons into giving you what you want. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I can do that. I have a foreign intimidation. <laughs> um, no, I mean... I... It, because we're trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. insight mm -hmm. almost makes sense to me. Okay. Um, Are you going to go with insight? <laughs> I'm... Uh, in, in, so, attempting a similar thing, but this time with... Are we just activating... Because your rune you can't activate unless you're hit. Yes. So, I can take damage. I'm take, right? You're good. Yes. You can take, you can give me all the damage you um, want. <laughs> I'll take it. But... I I almost feel like it's not necessarily using the exact power. I feel like it's using the divine energy from the rune. Mm. So to say activate it, but like activating it in a way that's trying to be towards this other source, if that makes sense. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So Medea, what are you choosing you for think? your role? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think since Let's we're see, trying to no figure idea. this out, I, Jesus I, so I what guess are you using? So I, I could take a rune. <laughs> I I but guess it, it either insight or arcana again. You can't uh, do the same skill twice. Can't do it again. So well, I I guess so you're going with insight. insight. Okay. Make it with advantage because of your twin sight. <sighs> oh right. Yeah. All right. <sighs> <laughs> well, is that better because it's twin sight and it's the same number? Apparently, yeah, but it's twins. It's two two sevens. I feel like I should get an extra reroll just for yeah. that. <laughs> nah. The twins have spoken. <laughs> All right, I will do a D30 roll. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you want high. All if right. it's high, I'll give you one more chance. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> 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 it's as high as we can get. <laughs> why do I say things? Why do I say things? Fine, fine. 
One more insight check with advantage, please. Uh, this is the natural 30 on the d30. <laughs> Alright, now get an add 20. Please. <laughs> bah! Why? Natural 19. Natural 19. It was close enough. I gotta say that especially with Mira being the Amita one, with Amita being luck and fortune, that feels like it was meant to be. <laughs> Let me switch my tick from fail to success, <laughs> as that is the last success needed. All right, sister, carrying us. So. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, I Harry. have it's not finalized the exact wording on the ability, but I will okay. be adding uh, before next session. You have both unlocked a new uh, twin tactic ability. Ooh. Take and give. At the expense of each of you using one of your runes, just an expense, an expense of the ability, you don't actually have to activate it. When Medea counters a spell, Mira can then immediately, as a free action, cast it back at someone mm. through her bow. Mm. You would use the caster's sa uh, uh, save stats and everything, as if they had mm. cast the spell. You're basically recursing it through Medea, through the rune, to your bow, and then casting it out again as a free action. Okay. Spell redirection, basically. That's cool. I like this. Nice. The only cost of this is each of you has to have a rune power activation left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you were if one of you doesn't have a rune left, you can't use this ability. Yeah. Right. But as you guys are practicing with Peria one day after potentially weeks of this back and forth constantly, there's this one moment where Peria shoots off an Eldritch Blast. It is sucked into the sword by Medea, and one of the runes on the blade <laughs> flashes and goes dim as it is activated. The power then appears in Mira's bow, the arrow <laughs> igniting with the Eldritch Blast itself, a rune flaring and firing back at Peria. Uh, Peria, I'd like you to inflict <laughs> Eldritch Blast on yourself. Uh, oh, sure. Just for fun's sake. Oh, just for funsies. Fuck! And I just get pushed back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> okay. Sorry, Peria! <laughs> that was fine. I'm glad that I'm not much of a damage oh. dealer. Man. God. That could have been terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, that was cool. That was cool. It was cool. <laughs> that could be so. very useful. Okay. That is one of the things the party accomplishes <laughs> during yeah. the three months. That was awesome. Uh, Mira and Medea cooperated to unlock their twin tactic that was hinted at, I think, like 20 seconds ago. It was a while ago. Oh, ago. A long time ago. <laughs> I've had that one on the back burner for a while. But hey, congrats. All right. I'm gonna move to Peria. Yeah, give someone else yeah. a chance. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing for three months? My Who are top... you messaging? Well, that's that's more of just in the, at sure. night before going sure. to sleep. But my top priority is to go through Orla's spellbook and okay. master said spells. Uh, okay, so I because have one it's... success. Right. Uh, this it's three months is an extraordinarily long amount of time. I'm going to put this down to three arcana checks right. one for each month of studying all right i will give you go. advantage on all three because it's just three checks over the course of, of the the three months all right here we go sorcery points <laughs> I would love that. yeah no, oh, really? oh, okay. but it's one cumulative like three months yeah. worth of yeah like one day's right. worth of sorcery points one sorcery okay. point okay. <laughs> oh one is a fail. Okay. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. Two. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm going to take it. Maybe it's good enough. And three. There. Okay. <laughs> Were you focusing on any one specific spell? It would be the fifth level spell. Okay. Um, whose name I have written down. Blade of the Five Arts. Yes, because it sounds dope as hell. Okay. Now I have a damage spell, guys. Your first, <laughs> your first month of learning these spells is Poop. 
difficult. You are not a wizard. You are learning in a way you've never learned before. Um, I'd say the first month, you feel like you maybe like just can't do it. You're you're you're, you're reading and, and it's not processing. You've always learned by feel. As a sorcerer and a warlock, your powers are either given to you or just there. They're not something you ever studied before. Um, but you keep going. The second month is a little rough as well, but ultimately not as bad as the first. You start to kind of feel for the type of magic your mother used. This strange mix of magic and melee, this spell swords type of fighting. And it's taking a bit of time before you get the the sensation down. But perhaps because there's a deadline approaching, maybe it's the anticipation or the anxiety. The third month, maybe Perry is just a procrastinator and waited until right to the end. <laughs> you have a really solid month, 30 days of learning this spell. And I think that's when Peria realizes that these spells have been in her because of her bloodline. Her mother made these spells. Of course you can learn these spells. You were just psyching yourself out the last two months as you master the Blade of Five Arts with a natural 20 in your third month. We did that one. <laughs> you did, actually, because yeah, yeah. Uh, the, first was, the first was a fail, the yeah. second was a fail, yeah. but natural 20 counts as two successes so you evened out the failures i'm just gonna let it be an even you made it just barely <laughs> <laughs> oh bless <laughs> cool, cool 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 um i have a question prior to leaving was there an opportunity to buy 600 gold pieces worth of fine art uh inks and yes paper? yes okay. you were at a port town there's a lot of imports like that absolutely all right cool i just wanted to clarify all right so 12 days maybe when in the beginning where i'm like fuck this shit can't learn this <laughs> um, i would like to describe um four scrolls of sea invisibility okay you're like you're like i'm gonna do something i know i'm good at yeah <laughs> i didn't write stuff down on a piece of paper <laughs> Say sometime in the middle of you scribing and stuff, you get pestered by Mira and Medea to Bye. shoot some Eldritch. <laughs> Once every couple of days, you shoot yeah. an Eldritch Blast or two at them. Oh, thank you all. <laughs> Scroll. Okay. Okay. Right. I have plenty of other things. All right. On. Then let's just jump yeah. real quick to Q. Yeah. We'll come back to Peria. Don't worry. <laughs> Months. Q. Uh, yes. What does Q try to accomplish during the three-month trip as the others around you are working on their own individual things? Uh, her main goal is trying to master or at least learn Exalted Flame. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a skill challenge for Q. More skill challenges! For Q alone, because nobody... Unless, unless Medea, were, were you going to try to join in on this um, as well? I, I was going to do that because I don't... I don't... It's gonna take us how how long to do what we just did? All the whole it's, three months. This or? is all like you can do multiple things it's over the course of three months. Yeah. This is yeah, just have, trying to get a yeah. feel for. You guys have okay. what like twelve hours of daylight per day. You can spend mm -hmm. doing this stuff. Then whatever you do in the evenings for ninety right. days. Yeah. And you guys aren't gonna be working the ship because you're not sailors. You don't have any experience in that. So you guys mm -hmm. are pretty much guests on a ninety yeah. day cruise. You guys have plenty of time to get whatever you'd like yeah. done. That, that so, was one of my things. To, okay. Is to I, I, I had a feeling. Is there anything, anybody else who was going to join in on this training? Uh, I wanted to work on inner flame improvement, but not yes. exalted yeah, flame. flame. Okay. Yeah. So then we'll do Medea and Q for exalted. And then at some point we'll do a Peria Mira for inner. Okay. So well, I, only, I only got inner, I believe. I don't got, think I got exalted. Nobody has exalted. No one does. Nobody has exalted. No, no, Nobody has okay. exalted. no. Yeah. Exalted okay. flame, for just reference again, is the state the Aurora Elite enter into that makes them Aurora Elite. By learning how to use this, you automatically, through the, the traditional methods, learn how to be an Aurora Elite. This is the, the prerequisite. This is the, the right to be call yourself an Elite. It is a state in which your body is pushed to its absolute limits. You move faster, attack harder, you recover quicker. It's kind of like a, I want to say Super Saiyan, but it's basically a state of, of like super <laughs> strength. 
yeah. um, but it is <laughs> temporary. It is short-term mm -hmm. bursts. The most powerful of the Aurora Elite learn how to use it over long periods. It mm -hmm. is also the state you need to learn in order to ever use Aura Plate to its full potential. You can use Aura Plate without it, but the armor is powered by this heightened state of Aura. Um, it is where you are, instead of like inner flame pushing your aura inwards, or just normal outer flame like you guys are casually, Exalted Flame, you are pushing all of it outward to the max potential. And it hurts a lot. It is not an easy state to reach. Uh, and, I believe, and worse, let's go. I believe Q and Peria met um, um, Jorik uh, Caliban, and he is the one who told you guys mm. about Exalted Flame. Yes. And that if you ever wanted to be an Aurora Elite, you'd have to learn that at least. Um, so, this is going to be an even harder skill challenge than what you two just did. Oh, I need five successes before two failures. Five successes. Holy, uh -huh. holy, holy dice. Oh. Once again, you cannot double up uh, your skill checks. This is over the course of three months to, to determine how you guys do in these fields. Um, these are a little bit more simplistic. You guys don't have okay. to give as much of a, a, an explanation. But anything you do decide to, you know, um, if there's an ability you think you have that would help you in this or something you could cast or spend, uh, it might help the DC go down. Some way that you think the training would go quicker. Mm. Okay. Or uh, you could just do straight rolls. For <laughs> you, every time she would try, you know, try to do it, mm hmm she would go into Void Stance to clear her mind as much as she can. Okay. Because um, as we're being a moment's later uh, text, it's when she's at her calmest, most clear of mind. Okay. Uh, sure. You can do that. Um, what role would you make with that? Let's start with With what? Um, I say first you'd start with, and here's my explanation for it, sure, uh, perception in that she's going to focus on um, trying to channel her aura all over, like making sure like it's not just in like some parts more than the other okay. like you know trying to evenly make sure like look and make sure it's all going out evenly sure okay like to evenly disperse your aura to all parts of your body i get that yes. okay give me a uh perception check all right and can i flare no Super okay. once again this is over the course of a three month period these are a lot more checks than this is a skill, skill challenge. That's why Perry was able to use or and such. This is a skill challenge. <laughs> oh, really? Come on, Q. <laughs> All right. 14. Oh. That will be one failure. Shit. Uh, as you attempt to, like, using. Uh, void stance to clear your mind and just focus all of your perception on where the aura goes. It occurs to you, and, and again, just like I did with Mira and Medea, failures I'll give a little bit of a hint for future attempts. It occurs to you, you don't even know if that's what you're supposed to do for Exalted Flame. Are you supposed to be clear of mind? Are mm -hmm. you supposed to put the aura everywhere? Is it supposed to be even? Does that matter? You realize in this moment, you don't even know what Exalted Flame is really that you're trying here um so that's a good insight to have as your first failure you don't really know what you're trying to go for even so second roll hey so shortly hey, after Mira talks to you about a sword, Q walks up like immediately sword. after. My sword. turn. Is Get out of here, Mira. Episode, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Q, yes. Hello, Isor, my close personal friend. Yes. What, uh, what, what would you need me to ask? Could you ask him when trying to practice Exalt Flame? What should be my first focus into even manifesting it? 
Got it. So you want tips on how to exalted flame? Yes. Maybe he could like send us a wiki page. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. A wiki how to. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Soren. <laughs> how are you? Hope you're well. Quick question. How to first manifest exalted flame? Any pointers? Key tips? Is it like ah or not? <laughs> how, many, like, ah! how many words is ah? One. 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 Just a lot of A's. Is it an R G H? Okay. Um. Soren. Uh. He gets back. Okay, he, the first reply is like with a bit of laughter. <laughs> okay. Uh. Excellent question, honestly. Um, Exalted Flame is an instant burst of energy. It is not a slow build or a gentle slope. It is almost painful to activate. All right. It should be, in terms, he's trying to conserve words. 75% of your power at once. At least. Nice. <laughs> so cute. That's what he said. He said, you gotta go, ah! No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say what he said in verbatim. <laughs> okay. I'm throwing that for fun. Q doesn't know percentages. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's maybe more like, um, maybe it's similar to like the crimson, um, true aura where it burns literally, um, but maybe in more concentrated burst. Think back to your Arcus days. Okay. Hmm. He starts staring off into space. <laughs> well, not the bad parts. Well, the the good parts. I guess there are no good parts. Between. <laughs> Is Soren and Peria's council, your next roll will be with advantage. Okay. Nice. Yay. <laughs> Medea, you can also make rolls if you have any ideas. I, I, I would be. I'm just letting Q do her thing. Sure. Sure. Right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, for this one, she will go into stone stance as it is her most powerful form. Like, it sort of like grits her and mm -hmm. readies for, you know, oncoming attacks. Sure. Mm -hmm. And she will try you. athletics. Okay. How do you use athletics in this moment? Um, so essentially she's trying to uh what's the learning? You know like when you take a, that moment, like before you're about to do something like you tense up and your body kind of like uh you're waiting for the hit yeah kind of like that like essentially she's trying to steal yourself do that only to like okay. for the pain of her or it's like flood yeah you're stealing yourself for the pain. exactly you're 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 getting yourself ready okay yes uh okay so i'll consider that bordering athletic uh it's at least like relating to physic physique yeah. Um, sure. Give that with advantage. I mean, they do do that when, yeah. when someone's, like, going like this and somebody's, like, punching them. That's, like, that's natural 20. <laughs> that is a success. All right. <sighs> okay, that's one success to one failure. You need four more successes. <laughs> oh. For <laughs> one more failure. Oh. Okay. That's gonna be a difficult one. <laughs> Good luck. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> Alright, for this one, she will use Wind Stance. Okay. And she will be trying acrobatics, essentially trying to push her body to its limit. Like, uh, use everything she can to, like, move her body the way she needs it to. For the orange uh, to okay, so maximize like 
or a flow. Okay. Okay, sure. My DC is in my mind. Okay, good. Make a without uh, advantage, just normal acrobatics check. Okay. See here. Medea's watching a good bit of this. When when sure. she's like, I'm gonna go do this, I'll be like, I'm gonna come watch you. <laughs> that is a failure. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just... So, unfortunately, uh, this being your first time attempting the uh, Exalted Flame, not too bad. You got one success with a natural 20, uh, but you did uh, reach your two failures. She, no, she actually tried before in uh, Renavi. Uh, this is the first skill challenge. Oh, attempt. fair. That was just like one off thing. Right. Um, the insight you gained from the acrobatics one is that how do I word this? It's not really about flexibility of the body. You feel it's more about flexibility of your aura. This is more of a mental thing. This is probably something Q never really mastered because it's not something you can just work out physically. Right. This is just, you need to understand your aura more. How could you push it further? How could you use it in a moment? Um, possible advice for your next attempt um, incorporating aura usage into your explanations might help like if you while doing a roll used aura burst or something to that effect uh, if you have that available yeah. because aura burst is kind of like the precursor to exalted flame if you think about how it activates a I sudden see. burst of aura um, that might help in future attempts but unfortunately, this skill challenge is a failure. You do not master the Aurora Elite's Exalted <laughs> Flame in a three-month boat trip. But you do have the groundwork now of how you could possibly move forward. Right. Uh, I'd say the three months was not wasted. You feel like you now have the ability to train on a regular basis for this. So anytime you'd like to take some time. Uh, keeping in mind, this is with the boat trip where you have two people with not only White Aura, but Aurora Light. Mm -hmm. um, Q uses a lot of decay on this trip trying this <laughs> method out when we're not doing a time skip thing <laughs> attempting to use Exalted Flame will be a heavy decay cost wherever you're at so it's, it's not something you just do in the middle of a dungeon yeah, it's just like go to the church, try it there <laughs> something like that Yeah. <sighs> here's my money, heal me <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> All right, so uh, unfortunately, Medea and Q, you did not manage to unlock the secret power of the Aurora Elite on this trip. But is there anything else Q would like to accomplish? Uh, it, yeah, the list was really just roleplay. Um, she okay. would spend uh, probably equal amount of time, probably like later at night, speaking with both Peria and Orlif. Uh, essentially just trying to learn more about their lives. I will before... also say... Oh, sorry. Continue. Before, you know, all this shit went down. Gotcha. Learning about them before everything got crazy. Yeah. Okay. I will also say, Q, that at least maybe like a week into the the boat trip, you feel a sense of ease come over you. As you feel one of the auras release, as the verdant aura is restored. I yeah, meant that she would let her also know the aura, she believes the verdant aura is back. Okay. You hear the wong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, before I go back to Peria, Medea, was there anything you individually wanted to accomplish on this trip? Um, it was just because uh, I, I wanted to give AJ his turn because I didn't want to spell with both By doing means. competing roles, you know, and then... Well, it would have been cooperative. <laughs> well, yeah, it's cooperative. Both of you learning. Um, to, yeah. Uh, so I kind of just... Supposed mm -hmm. to make roles there. My bad. I, no. I said, I, I literally said, Medea, if you'd like to, and she said, I'm no, going to let okay. AJ do it. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to let AJ yeah. do it because I, I didn't want to 
mechanically, I didn't want to be like, okay, well, how many does this person have? How many does this person have? And then write it all down. This was a group. This was a group thing because you both were doing it. It's, it's... Yeah, yeah. Um, mine was probably just gonna be whatever you want me to roll. I didn't wasn't gonna do anything crazy behind it. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exalted seems like it'd be good to do to try to. Okay, that's what we just did. Is what I was saying okay. is that this was okay. a this was a Medea Q cooperative like training okay. together thing. That's why I was putting it out there that you could roll if you wanted, or Q could keep rolling. And yeah, that's. This was I the, thought they were like, going to roll I individually. Because... No, because that's going to take forever because it's the five successes to failures. I was doing it like you two did before, oh. where you both could. I said yeah. It's a I thought we were YouTube. doing it separately. Like no, that's why I said five. you could roll if you wanted. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, oh well. Then <laughs> um yeah. I, I was just kind of thinking in Medea's mind, she wants to see how she's doing and see how she makes well, progress. Well the problem is is that Q takes the full three months yeah. to do her checks. If you're just waiting until she's done, you're waiting until the boat trip's over because Q is just that's why I wanted it to be together, because you're all stuck okay. in a boat together. Yeah, so if well, one yeah, person's yeah, yeah. doing exalted flame training, the other person's also going to be doing it, probably. Because you, while during this, you're also doing your training with your sister at some point for the attack. Yeah, this is all no. kind of happening at the same time over yeah, the three-month yeah. period. So Unfortunately, Medea's... the exalted flame training was a failure for whoever wanted to try it. But that but wasn't really group... trying it. I was just look, watching her do it. I was... Sure. And then maybe the night, during the night, she would do her own thing, her own time. This That's is kind of. No, the... I know what you're going for, but because you're all stuck on a small space, yeah. I'm keeping these activities as group activities. If okay. anyone would like to do the thing, you're joining in, you're doing group checks. Gotcha. Just to keep it simple, because you're also doing your training with Mira at some point, too. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, no. For the sake of the trip, Exalted Flame failed, but the group gained insight on what you might need to look towards to use right. it in the future. Yeah. You need to learn how to better manipulate your aura. Right. But yes, no, I apologize if that was unclear. That's why no, I was offering No, no, that's, that's roles. fine. I just, I just, I didn't understand, so. Understood. Is there anything else you would like to try to accomplish during the boat trip? Um. I mean, all I really wanted to do was do that thing with my sister and... Okay. You don't have to have anything else if that's not, all. Not, not really. Mira, was there anything <laughs> else you wanted to accomplish? Uh, me and Peria can do the the, the 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 inner flame thing next. Yes, you two did have that. If anyone else would also like to join in on that, you may as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would, didn't... I wanted to. You guys to. have a lot of... Yes, you can. You can do the inner flame one as well. We haven't done that one yet. We have a lot of time. It's a ninety-day boat trip. Now I do, I do have inner flame, but how does that? Is it just so it gets better. It? It, it does get better as you use it more. Um, the amount you can uh, absorb per round gets better, and uh, I believe the amount of. Harriet, rounds. did you have the better version, or was it Q that has the better version right now? I think it's Q. Yeah, it's Q. I have basic. Q, Q can uh, do it for ten rounds, and she reduces the damage by ten. Oh, I have the same deck. That's the same. That's yeah. the same. Oh. This is what yep. I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, what was your plus to saves, AJ, on Inner Flame? Might have been higher. Uh, I think three? I think yeah. three. I oh, think okay. that's that's literally the bonus is the plus one to all saves. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for cool. Inner Flame tra training, training anyone who would like to may... Uh, I, uh, sure. <laughs> okay. I definitely need to do that. Sure, why not? <laughs> this would be better at that. All right. Uh, this will be a group uh, challenge. This one's a lot easier than the other two. I only need uh, three successes before three failures. Okay. okay. Three to three. And three to three. Same rules as before. You can't reuse mm -hmm. skills, uh, but anyone can make rolls if you'd like. Skills. Okay. Um... Man, it'd be so much easier if it was, if it was saving throws. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, saving throws. Come on, baby. Um, okay. um, skill, 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 skill. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of something for that. Well, you can do like straight strength, dex, con. You could do those as well. Just not saving throws. Yeah. 
the DC is generally lower for a straight ability. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. No, we cannot intimidate the inner flame, Mira. Why not? <laughs> That's a great suggestion. Stay <laughs> active. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. May I speak with Q and talk with her about how she continued to master it, so I can gain additional insights that maybe I was missing before. Uh, yeah. If you'd like to give me an insight with advantage as your role, I will allow that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty-two. That is a success for insight. Okay, hmm. I'm done. So Someone talking else. with <laughs> talking with Q, she basically works through you with you on uh, how Q managed to get better at Inner Flame about maintaining the uh, the the bonuses of internalizing your aura, and uh, you feel a little bit more insightful on how you can improve yourself. Hmm. Two more successes needed before three more failures. Mm. Hmm. Mm. All right. Um. Oh, I'm thinking acrobatics. Come acrobatics is really good. Uh, How would I put that into this? <laughs> talk to close personal friend. <laughs> Soren. <laughs> A Soren episode. Hey. This is a yeah. Susalian thing. If anything, I would contact. This uh, is. This one is very Susalian, Inner Flame. Hey, Soren. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice about Inner Flame? Uh, have you used before? No. Things to focus on? I'm going to say these are spaced out a couple Probably. days or weeks apart, just so he's not getting bombarded in the same day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, you get a response. Inner flame is not my specialty. It makes it so you don't use aura. It prevents aura use for a period. The Aurora Elite are designed around consistent aura use. Not my thing, really. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, so we've already done. Half uh, two. Insight's the only one so far on this one. Two so would like to contact her mom. Yep. Or for advice mm. on it. Sure. Mm. Hey, mom. I'm trying to work on the inner flame. Do I have any advice on how to hold it longer, like when you're actively moving around? As far as I can use acrobatics. Hmm. Oh, uh, hello. Hmm. You have the stone with her, right? So this yes. Is just this Great. is limit unlimited. <sighs> Inner flame is a traditional art of our people. To limit the amount of aura used in a conflict, you internalize the abilities so that you take less damage and suffer less loss. It's particularly useful for those entering in the Rite of Ordering, which now is no longer a thing, but we had a lot of intensive training for it. The most important thing with Inner Flame is your endurance, your stamina, the ability to maintain it. It does start to wear on you. It doesn't seem like it does at first, but it's like tensing a muscle for a long period of time. And if you do it for too long, you'll cramp up. Staying limber will help. Um, it does matter that you have good physical fitness for this, but more importantly is your aura control, the ability to manipulate and move your aura as you see fit. So your willpower and resolve come into play as well um, for mechanical purposes. Uh, your next acrobatics check will be at advantage. Uh, additionally, if someone else would like to use this advice, you could do a wisdom check with advantage. Mm. Mm. Well, I don't have a ship of wisdom. No, I got no. damn good acrobatics. <laughs> um, I have, yeah, I've got decent acrobatics. I don't know if mine's as good as yours. Probably not. No. Well, I don't know athletic. if I even hear this because you're you're. Well, you're I think we're all kind of sharing the knowledge. I yeah, think. Oh, we're all like pop. <laughs> we're all sharing the phones. Um, 
Yeah, wrong. she's more of an athletic than acrobatics. Then why did you whisp whisper acrobatics during the call? I said athletics, but... I'm understand. pretty sure you said acrobatics. That's why I said it. Mira, <laughs> confirm! Mira, confirm! <laughs> could have sworn. <laughs> play back! Play um, the back! It's more! So I uh. have my voice is sometimes hard to understand over the mic. I mean... But she will <laughs> defer to Magia. If she wants to try the acrobatics for the you're, dancing. You're, you're fine, Mira. Don't worry as about it. As long as I heard what your mom said. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. She well, explained like... to you all. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can certainly try. <laughs> That's right. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Uh, um, It's just advantage or normal? Advantage. Uh, advantage for acrobatics or wisdom oh. at this point. All right. Well, my... She's definitely can't use wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is a success for acrobatics. Yes. Oh, nice. I can have that sweet, sweet wisdom. I can try for wisdom. I have 12 mm. with wisdom, so. I can try. That Just technically gives it. me the highest wisdom. <laughs> Not 10 wisdom. <laughs> Uh, right. uh, I, like I don't right know if it'll roll advantage on these, so I might just have to click it twice. We'll see. You can do advantage on a wisdom yeah. check. Uh, does it? Does it do it? Yeah. If, uh... Oh, hey, look, a natural oh, 20. <laughs> now you're a third success being a natural 20. I did it. Despite how Exalted Flame may have gone and <laughs> the, the, the difficulties of learning a brand new style of using aura, everyone here knowing how to at least activate Inner Flame, plus the Sage Council of the Crimson Empress, you manage to succeed. Uh, I, everybody can now mark, you have a plus three to all saves while in Inner Flame, and even Q learns something, you all get 11 rounds of Inner Flame. Yeah. One extra round. You feel that it will take more training to get any additional abilities or damage loss, but just little bits now. Hey, I'll so take everyone a... should have 11 rounds of Inner Flame, 10 less damage, and a plus 3 to saves. 11 rounds. Oh, yes. Hey, I'll take a plus to saves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the big one, honestly, is just the plus to, uh, to saves is huge. It's a cloak of protection right there. I mean, a cloak of protection is, yeah, plus one to each, so yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so. We got a super rare legendary cloak yeah. of protection. For Granted, it, while using uh, Inner Flame, oh, yeah, you can't yeah, activate yeah. any other aura abilities or it breaks it for the rest of the day. So it is kind of a commitment thing, but yes, it is a very useful uh, skill to have. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh. All right. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, I, I mean, before I go to Perry, I know she's already got all stuff prepared. Anyone else? Anyone else would like to get accomplished? During uh, the three yes, <laughs> I do. Well, I'm sorry, no, it's but fine, it's, it's true. Fine. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I had mentioned that I kept one of the feathers to work with Naren uh, on right. trying to use my fletching and possibly her knowledge to make something out of it. Um, thinking errors, because Mira, of course. Um, right. Okay, um, I'm assuming you would have bought enough raw materials before leaving on yes. the boat, because you need the wood for the arrows and whatnot. Yeah, I'll expend whatever um, money I need to retroactively. Sure. Okay. With Naren. Alright, this is not going to be a challenge, not a skill challenge, but a couple of checks. First, I would like a nature check with advantage with her assisting. Okay. Nature, you like nature checks with advantage. advantage. Yeah, Easy. That's nice. Yep, that's absolute nice. success Done. on that one. <laughs> uh, the two druids able to determine the potential effects of this arrow uh, that you're trying to make. Um, you determine the nature of the feather, as even Silben did, that it does have life giving abilities. Um, and Sylvan is, I think, working on a few things uh, for you. Yeah, I had asked him to... St he was looking into a way to, like, work these into the bow itself, was my right, request to right. him. Did you leave one with somebody else? I left I feel like there was... two with Sylvan and one with myself. One with yourself. Okay, that's right. Because I only had three in total. Oh, three, okay. Um, 
Naren uh, helps you divide the plume into enough uh, featherage. You could make six arrows worth. Okay. Well, we're going to get to what those arrows do yep. in a minute here. Yep. Uh, I need now a Arcana check with advantage. Okay, Arcana. I, that's my second best skill. Not bad. 17. Not bad. Not bad. Um, Naren, using her abilities as a druid and her understanding of magic in a non-arcane way, um, believes that these arrows could... Do you still have any more of the um, healing arrows? I do. Arrows? I have... Let me check how many I have. Um... I have so many arrows. Give me a moment. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's kind of a character trait. Yeah. Uh... Ah, three. I have three. <laughs> three. Okay. Um, I would say you have plumage for six, but because of the slightly lower arcana, you're just going to make three arrows, but you're going to have to use those as the base. Okay. I think I see where this is going. Okay. So, one sec. So, I will just delete those off. Yep. Or rather, I'll rename them to... Rename, yeah, that works as well. <laughs> yeah, because the healing arrows were 2d4 plus... Six. Yes. One second, I'm just looking up something real quick. Hmm. What were those arrows called, uh, the base ones? Uh, oh, I just have them in here as healing arrows. Okay, all right, I'm just trying to... Um, then I think they were based off of the... Uh, Griffin Saddlebag ones? I think they're, yeah, just called Healing Arrow. Yeah. yeah. I believe so. Love Griffin Saddlebag. I so, know. So much. So much cool stuff. Okay, uh, and now this is for the fletching itself. I need a dexterity check with advantage. Ah. Yep. Well... <laughs> Makes well, sense. This is not a fiend today. <laughs> I mean, she, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she does this all the time. So, the first check, the nature check, allowed you to understand how you could use these. That was a success. The second check, the arcana, determined if you had the raw materials and the understanding how to make brand new arrows. You didn't, so you had to use the base of the healing arrows. So, you can only make three. The third check is how well you can actually make them, which is a natural 20 for 25. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Mira, note that you have uh, three uh, of your, your healing arrows are, um, what's the word? I'm trying to look at uh, Oh, I'll write, I'll type it out for you because I'm typing and such. I'll put it in general. Um, doo -doo -doo. These are Simurg arrows. Because uh. they are fletched by the plume of a Simurg, a greater Simurg. So, basic healing arrows, when you hit a creature with the other than yourself, they heal 2d4 plus your dex and wisdom mod together. Uh, these arrows, instead of healing uh, 2d4, heal half their hit points. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You got a very lucky uh, natural 20 of the dexterity check because there was going to be a 1d4 minus 1 of broken arrows if you had failed that one. Oh. Ah. But you natural 20, so you get all three of your Simurg arrows. 
much like the healing arrows already, if it's an ally, uh, you have advantage on the attack against them uh, to hit them. But you do have to hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Completely fair. Uh, these arrows are non-retrievable. Yep. Upon entering a target, they fade into ash and heal immediately. They are not, uh, they're one-time uses, basically. Um, yes. Now, is it creatures? It could be any Creature, it could be an enemy. It could be, it could be an ally, it could be an enemy, it could be whatever you feel. You just have to hit it. Yeah. Technically speaking, as long as it's a living creature, yeah, you can heal half its hit points. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you also... <laughs> You don't know, even Naren can't tell you, but you feel like firing this at an undead creature would deal ridiculous damage. Ooh, that makes Anything sense. Anything that is harmed by the, the essence of life. Nice. Yes, okay. Mira, that would be horrible. Thank you for that thought. That would be horrible. Trying to, oh Imagine trying to nat, nat one, heal somebody, and hit an enemy. <laughs> Yeah, that might happen. Who knows? Yeah. The DM's like, mm. good thing he's no, giving me advantage. Because you, have, because you have advantage and you're elves, you have your stupid triple advantage thing. It's nearly impossible for you to nat one. So I'd basically have to triple nat three one. Three nat ones. You'd have to roll three nat ones to. It's like a one percent or lower chance. Uh, I that's like a one in six hundred or some ridiculous. It's... Like, yeah, that's absurd. It could happen. Is though. that is that triple advantage only for the their Oh, Eladrin elves? It's any elf. Uh, it's, it's, I think elf it's a feat general. thing. Yes, or it is a, it's a racial, like, it's an elf-only feat. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. What was it called? Fey or elvish? Uh, elven accuracy? Elven accuracy, elven yep. Elven accuracy, and it has yeah. to be, it specifies... Horse shit. Basically, it doesn't work with strength. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it can work with, like, spellcaster for, like, Eldritch Blast. It can work... Yep. with dex i think it's like basically any mental stat or dex yep. but strength dex, builds int, wisdom or charisma they basically and you can re-roll one of the two die on an advantage die which basically means it's triple advantage it's three dice because you're gonna roll oh. which you're gonna re-roll whichever dice is lower of the two yeah. it's ridiculous but yep. so that is what you managed to make with one of the plumes uh, in your three arrows, you still feel like you have three uh, fletching materials for potentially three more arrows, okay. but you don't know what you would make if you didn't use healing arrows as the base. If you got a higher arcana, you might be able to make something else. I'll put times three simmer arrow materials down. Yes. Then. If you can acquire three more healing arrows, you could one-to-one -one replicate what you just made. But uh, I think Naren would tell you that if you found either someone with better arcane knowledge or you just rolled better, basically, <laughs> um, you might be able to make something even better that doesn't require a base material. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Still, I'm extremely happy. Um, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I don't think I had... I have one thing, but Perry can go first. Okay, Megan, time for you to tell me your laundry list of messages. All right, well, so one of the other things I wanted to do was completely cleanse the PPE over the course of the three months. Absolutely. Very possible. Cool. Um, um, now, here's a question. Who do you... How I do it. How do yes. you do it? Uh -huh. All right, what I'm going to do. So <laughs> this goes in conjunction with the other thing I wanted to try to do, also related to aura powers, which was to... It's kind of a threefold thing twofold go thing. for it we got time okay so i know shift i can just use and it just works yes. um so one thing i wanted to do with my true crimson aura was talk to q and um probably orlith mm -hmm. to see if there's a way to lower that cost on the, the, the physical toll on the body okay some shift no. from true crimson aura true uh, crimson yeah okay yeah so basically i was going to spend spend extra decay right. during the course of these things and be like nah, and nakashan please heal me <laughs> and it's a little more I juicy see. than it should have been that makes Deception. sense 
because I going back to what I do. So <laughs> <laughs> you're back on your bullshit. Uh, yeah. I used okay. more than uh, I should have during training. Clearly. <laughs> Wow, Perry, you must be going real hard in this training. You have 58 <laughs> decay. Yeah, you never know. That's so weird. <laughs> I'm nearly dead. No big deal. I say I can't even move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that, that Dragon Ball Z training under five times Earth's gravity crap. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, if you are going to focus on bettering your true Crimson Aura, we're going to do this like we did the others. This is a skill challenge. Um, yeah. To make your, this is only you because you're the only one in the, bar, the boat with true crimson aura. If you uh, are going for, um, you're going for not making the aura itself better, but making it cheaper is what you're going for. Um, is that what I'm, I'm trying to understand here? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, how about this? That was my original idea. Okay. But then the wording in it is physical damage dice. With yes. shift, with shift, I'm wondering if I could make it apply to magical damage dice. That would be a, probably a question for your mom, especially who is a mage. Yeah, with okay. <laughs> uh, so you contact Orlif. Yes, no key. Like, may I borrow the rock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have the mom rock, please. Um, the mom rock, please. Yes. <laughs> It's painted and it says mom and it has like yeah. little hearts on it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're like, hey, Ma, it's not a good time. Are you busy? Uh, not too busy to talk to my daughter. What's uh, What can I do for you? I have a crazy question. So, I know that our aura, when it's super, supercharged and the true crimson flare and burn in your body yes. it's only really for like you know physical uh weapon attacks but have we ever in our history of a family tried to apply it to magical attacks that has come up more often than you'd think uh, especially with myself being a uh wizarding warrior i was tempted to apply it to my abilities as well the problem with um, the True Crimson is it's... Honestly, it's akin to an Aurora Burst. It's just a flood of power to the muscles and the veins and the nerves. It doesn't necessarily have an actual magical application to um, your spellcraft. That is something that the Cobalt would be more uh, adept with. But... Um, let me have her what do... If, what if one possessed, you know, shift. The Aurora Art shift. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so let me do a roll for yeah. her. You think about it. Mm. Arcana. <laughs> an Arcana <laughs> from Orlith. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Mm, 27. Mm. Mm. Aurora Shift, having the ability to change the color of your aura, is something that I will admit does not happen much within Susail. I'm not saying that it's it's uh, forbidden or outlawed, but when the clans put so much emphasis on the, uh, the heritage of an aura's color... Even the desire to use an ability like Aurora Shift is um, unusual. But I'm an open-minded woman. I suppose it... I've never really tried to shift a true aura in that kind of way. It has potential. Hmm. I would say... While in true aura state, try to shift to a blue aura. See what happens. Let me know how that goes. I'm very curious. Me too. That's why I picked it. Because okay. I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> okay, so what we're... I'm going to ask for a... Because the true auras are pretty powerful on their own, and they have a high cost. Sure. Are you going for... Lowering the cost, or improving the ability, or 
creating a new ability with your aura. You have three <laughs> paths here. I'm not gonna let you yeah. be greedy. You have no, one no, you no. can choose from. Sure. Um, my gut is telling me that making it less costly or more powerful would be easier than new ability. So I'm gonna do new ability. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it would be easier to do the other ones. So we're not Hello. doing those. Let's no, just throw it away. One. Absolutely. Hello. Okay, high great. High risk, high reward. Let's great, great. Okay. It. So, to apply your true crimson aura, this incredibly <sighs> physical warrior based aura, to magic using aura shift, yeah. we're going to need four successes before three failures. It's not. Oh boy. It's okay. not the four to two that we had before, but it is still rough. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. Keeping in mind that decay use is going to be healed throughout the months. Yeah. You can still try to describe how you use your decay to help okay. this, though, to lower DCs. So what yeah. are you rolling? So I want to try to maybe preface it like with like some practice runs of just getting comfortable with shifting my aura in general. So while okay. I'm like basic aura shifting to blue comfortably, feeling the difference. In... Feeling the difference in what the aura would be like as, as yeah. blue versus red, right? Right. Um. Did, did you tell Q you were doing this as you were talking about your mom? Oh, yeah, I would have consulted you, probably. Yeah. Um, because uh, you Q had did all have of the that things. ability. Right. Q had a different ability. It wasn't yeah. Aurora Shift. You just had multiple auras. Mm. It's not the same as changing your one aura. You were cycling through a Rolodex of auras that you had at your disposal. <laughs> oh, um, okay. The sensation's a little different. Oh, I wouldn't. I, I thought Arcus had all of the Aurora arts as well. Uh, well, yes. Once upon a time, uh, sure. eons ago, Proud yes. But Q, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but Q, as you know her now, yeah. had multiple auras when you knew her, and then she oh, lost that's them. Right. Mm. Yeah. I guess I would consult her on the feeling of the Cobalt aura and what it feels like in difference to a Crimson aura. Literally, I never really used Cobalt as uh, caster. Yeah, I did. Never really. I did, you know, here and there just to see what it felt like, but um, it's definitely different. The, the red auras are definitely meant to be, you know, more combative auras, whereas blue definitely puts you more in touch with your magical abilities. Again, yeah. I didn't really have any. But yeah, unfortunately for Q, blue had no benefit whatsoever. Um, but the sensation is different, and I suppose with Q describing it, I'll give you advantage on your first roll, whatever it may be. All right, I'm I'm feel like insight, kind of trying to piece to, or maybe even invest investigation, I guess, because I'm like, hmm. I don't know, up to you, but I feel like it's either insight or investigation as far as trying to. Put all, take all the pieces, put them together, and do it. Investigation makes sense. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But before yeah. you even get to the practical yeah. application, you're just doing like a theory at this point, yeah. like how to. I, I like that. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. That makes sense. Oh yeah. Didn't go yet. I have I'm not waiting. seen it. I'm waiting for the yeah. I'm not oh, yeah. sure twenty to start. That's a uh, pretty good yep. start. Yep. yep. Look at all these twenties. Oh my god. Uh, this has been a day of of twenties. What the hell? Mm -hmm. Um, Peria, before you even begin to actually try to modify your true crimson aura, you realize you're undertaking something that potentially no one in your clan has undertaken in a long, long time, which is some might even consider blasphemous to the true crimson yeah. aura. Um. <laughs> So you're trying to do as much research as you can before you commit blasphemy. It's all great. Um, and you feel confident. You've got the theory crafting done. You understand what you need to do. You need to maintain your true crimson aura. Shift into a blue while maintaining the true aura. See if you can somehow blend them and see what happens. You feel like you've got a solid base. You need three more successes before three failures. Oh, God. Okay. I don't know what to do next. <laughs> Intimidation, yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> one of these is gonna have to be a mission, it I guess. You know, oh, can I try to pers persuade my aura to move? 
in the way I wanted to. Do it, do have it. A, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know how to apply a charisma base. Imagine Peria, like the bow of the ship on like a, one of the knights by herself, like, okay. Okay, Aura, cooperate with me. You get what you want, I get what I want. We work together. <laughs> That's pure parry so, tactics right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Really I'm just going to sit down and meditate. We're going to like, all right, all right, Aura, this is what we're going to do. You like going this way, but you really, you want to go that way. Then you can circle back, come back to what you know, which is a little bit of pulling from all the different sources. If you would like to make a persuasion check. <laughs> sure, I'll do it. DC in my head. Normal. <laughs> Normal. Fuck it. Yeah. That is a fail. Aww. No, that makes sense. It's a two. Eh, that's fun. It was worth it. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, once again, second step in this process is still not actual application. You're still in the preliminary testing phases. And yeah. you feel like you didn't learn anything from that failure, <laughs> unfortunately. Learned nothing. That's fine. All right. All I know is that I got to work on my pep talks. Um, yeah, so. it, it, it wasn't willing to listen to reason, so now intimidate yeah. it. Now you yeah. intimidate the aura. Yep. That's what <gasps> okay. I do. I guess I will go ahead practice using um, true crimson aura. Okay. Um, and I would like to um, summon my bident and use it kind of as a focus using something that the true aura is familiar with, which is a weapon, and okay. then um, casting a spell through it and trying mm. to amplify the the blast, the Eldritch okay. Blast. Okay. Okay. So what um, kind of check are you going for with this? This feels to me Arcana. I agree. Arcana okay. would be good. All right. Normal. 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 Come on, yeah. family now. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. failure on the Arcana. A great idea, but okay. It was. It was the good rules. <laughs> for for and this will be my advice on this one if you want to expend something or like use up something that that will absolutely reduce your dc like if in this case you would use like a daily ability of the the, the spear or you had gone to somebody for like counseling on like how to possibly channel this like how whenever you ask you know Naren or uh mm. soren or somebody for advice i give you advantage on it um Using the spear was a good idea, but it was kind of just reducing the DC. Advantage mm -hmm. comes from a sacrifice or okay. a advice from someone else. Okay. So um, we need three successes before one failure. Yay. Um, okay. So if I'm hearing this mechanically to interpret, if I were to cast a spell that it had would... a spell cost, like a yes. spell slot... I would that give would... advantage if it if it was if if it aligned. You can't just cast like fireball and expect that no. to make sense. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would like to try to um have uh, go to Mira. Uh, yes. Hello. Hi, Mira. It's my turn. Come with oh, me. Uh, um, all right. I'll be back. So we'll go go down to training training pit. And they're like, okay, Mira. I need you to cast your highest spell that you have available. Uh. Okay, um, I can upcast Thunderstep. <laughs> sure, that works. Just stay a little far away from me. I don't want to get hit by it. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and once again, using my true Crimson Aura, and then um, I'm going to throw up, have the Bident with me, ready to go, just as, actually, I don't, as a focus point, and I'm going to go ahead and cast the new... Blade of Five Arts, or no, third month, because this, is this. We'll just three? say you you get it by that point. We okay. we can say this training because you had to do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, reading. Sure, if you want to okay. say this part of the the attempt took that. I mean, you did get two failures, so yeah, we're, we can say I that this is was towards to the use end. The cobalt art portion of it. Okay, kind of make it familiar. Sure, like, we can say this. We'll pretend like this was one of the last rolls okay. you made in the in the. Cool. All right. All right. So I'll cast the spell to have it floating, ready to go. And be like, uh, All right, Mira. For, uh, let me look up. What did? 
It was a reaction when someone cast a spell. Right. And the sword is within five feet of it. Okay. Um, do you have the hilt of a bro broken sword? I will use a sorcery point, so I don't have to. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that is a material component that is yes. specifically written out. All right. Oh, wait, hold cool. on. Wait, one second, one second. Hold on. Let me find my sorcery. Is it material or verbal thematic? Ooh. All right, I'll go to find a Bardestian and be like, hey, can I borrow your sword? <laughs> <laughs> your sword and then break it? Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Yeah, sure. Not related to the skill oh, challenge yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natural one. No, sorcery point. Okay. 19. Yeah, okay, much better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess, like, the, the, he would point you over to the training area. There's a bunch of, like, dulled swords oh, you can take. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you, you did that. <laughs> Snap it. <laughs> How do you, that's uh, harder than you'd think, but I'd say with the help of someone on the ship, I'll allow, like, you All reach right. one of the, one of the portholes and, like, activate the spring-loaded giant blades! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> you know, something. Appreciate it! Way to snap yeah. a sword on, a, on the yeah, boat, yeah, it's yeah, possible. Yeah. Okay, you have the hilt of a broken sword that is the material right. component for Blade of Five Arts. Now I will do all the things. Okay. And you just what need to is, get a bunch of those. I feel like charisma, since it's my spellcasting modifier, I can just. Yeah, I'll allow that. Absolutely. Charisma with advantage, check. and uh, and I'll say a lower DC with advantage. Charisma check. Come on, man. Come on. No poop. All right. Absolutely. No poop. No poop. Success. Yeah, no poop. <laughs> <laughs> Two successes before one failure. All right. Thank you, Mira. Uh, sure, no, no, no problem. Um, right. anything else I can help with? Um, I'm gonna go talk to Naren. Oh, Do well, I... okay, we were working on an arrow, but that's fine, you can take her away from me. Well, I'll just wait until she has free time. Ah, uh, that's fine. Dinner. Let's, let's go, let's go. Right. We're making good okay. progress, though. I'll try, man. <laughs> or woman. Um, so, um, go to Naren. Okay. Like, all right. Naren, I remember once upon a time you read everyone's auras back a long time ago. That was had, some like, time ago, yes. Just like this ability to read and auras and stuff. I'm trying to do something weird with my aura. I see. What yeah. can I assist with? Um, so basically, I have, like, you know, my true crimson aura. Yes, and... yours to Salian gift. Yes. And I have this new cool ability to shift my aura. Look at it. It's blue now. Oh, that is a White rare now. art. It's back to red. Yeah. Um, man, that's really costly. I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> um, it, it's a bit. So I wanted to basically take my cool Sicilian lineage and blasphemy or blasphemous <laughs> and shift it just a little bit into the cobalt realm i see that does sound vaguely blasphemous <laughs> based on my time in susail they would probably yes. be upset at hearing this I, I would be happy to help this sounds fascinating <laughs> <laughs> thank you um okay so, so naren naren basically during your next role is going to be reading your aura while you're practicing and providing tips um, so it will give you advantage on your next roll. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What are you going to attempt? I would like to incite myself. Okay. In All my right. Aura channels. I like that. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Come on, digital dice roller. Don't do me dirty. Yes, you did. That is a success. <laughs> okay. This is very familiar. <laughs> you need one success before one failure. Yeah. Uh, no, you're uh, <laughs> the sweat, sweaty. Sweaty time. Sweat. Down to it. Down to the right, wire. Sweat meme. Sweat meme. Um. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, that's what I'm thinking. Mhm. Mm I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. Um. I would like to. So I'm feeling I want to use my gift from um, or rod of the pack keeper. 
Mm-hmm. And so that is kind of like borrowing power from sure. an other, another being or another source, I guess. And so I'm thinking about how I'm borrowing an aspect of the cobalt and their shenanigans to amplify myself the way that the rod amplifies my warlock abilities. Okay. Mm-hmm. What role are you thinking with this? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's probably the most important part of this. Yeah. Is to what know are you what thinking? You're... I am thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm just currently just thinking of crazy ideas of abilities, of things that I can spend in my quest for shenanigans. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and how that would work is a great question. Um. <sighs> Maybe I will. I don't think. <laughs> Who else is another powerful person? That I could message and ask a question. <laughs> hey, Bobby, where are you? Question. <laughs> um. Dad. Nah. He's a tool. Um, <laughs> Finn's like somebody's um, speaking ill about Ayn. <laughs> <laughs> my homie, my, my bro. Homie, my bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, God, I can message freaking Quill. Which you could way, actually. What question? Oh, shit. <laughs> My, um, not boyfriend, um, not the boyfriend. heir, the heir, the cobalt heir. Oh. Um, the cobalt heir. Yes. I have him ever. Yes. Like a Evarch. minute. Yes. He is a spellblade by his namesake. Um, yes, he oh is. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, where's the voice? Where's the voice? What is it? I, I, yeah. Holy crap. <sighs> I don't even remember right. who the hell that is. <laughs> it's been so long. It's been a long time <laughs> since the name Evark came up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I guess I'll send him a message. Oh, this guy. Okay. <laughs> I'll send him a message. And I will say, Long time, Evark. Long time. <laughs> long time, no <laughs> anything. <laughs> Wondering. Since you are so strong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Butter him <laughs> up. With your aura. How. Rewind the how. Has. Have. That's the right word. Have. You. Or. No, no. How have you amplified your super strong attacks with your aura? <laughs> I don't know. It's not my best message. <laughs> <laughs> there is a pause. <laughs> but in that can. Hmm. <sighs> A very shut can. <laughs> well, <laughs> hello there. It has <laughs> been some time. He, oh I was wondering when we might reconnect. I forgot. Yes, I am quite amazing. I forgot, Mira. This guy has a crush on Perry. And yes. Cobalt with melee is difficult, but I make it work. Maybe I could teach you sometime. <laughs> yeah. Long sigh. <laughs> uh, this guy had a crush on you. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's why I went that route. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Well. Hmm. Gaston's Gaston's not. Yes, Mira, he gives <laughs> Gaston a hundred percent. What was the picture of him? 
Oh, I'll put it in. Red yeah, haired, uh, short haired, blue big big sword. Let me see if yeah, I can like find. Oh god, I have to find it again. Hold on. Actually, I think it's in NPCs if you just search for it. You know, it might um, just be. Let me scroll. Yeah, up yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Evark, E V A R K, July twenty fifth. Oh, it's from July. Oh my god. Of it's... last year. July of last year. Oh my goodness. Evark of Cobalt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll bring it up for. Holy crap. Stream to see. You passed it, yeah. This guy. Going in the archives. There it I'm is. Out. Of archives. Yeah, none of this art is mine. I, if people claim this art, let me know. Yeah. But, uh, Mini Gaston. <laughs> Mini Gaston. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So, I'll send them another message. Uh, Do you feel disgusting? I feel disgusting. <laughs> Um. Oh gosh, hit the mic. All right. Ow. Sorry. <laughs> um. Well, unfortunately, it will be some time. Why don't? I message you frequently. Until then, <laughs> uh, so very curious as to some tips, cobalt or a powerful. <laughs> She's half gagging. Uh, Cat just throwing up her mouth. <laughs> uh, there is a Another small pause, then. Mmm, private reconnaissance in the meantime. I suppose that could work. <clears throat> Unfortunately, right now, my aura is still not working. But I'd be happy to share what I know from experience. <laughs> And I have a lot of experience. Oh, God. <laughs> oh! Can I punch this guy? <laughs> you may, by all means, if you see him again. <laughs> That'll be the first thing I do is spitch slap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I will take some time over uh, the next couple of days to message him. Okay. So you spend some time messaging with Evark. Yes. You find that he spends about 80% of the messages trying to ask personal questions and get to know you better. You have to basically force any actual information out of him. So give me a just, not for the skill challenge, give me a persuasion check. Yeah. A persuasion your, check your, your, your... to get advantage on your actual Correct. check. <laughs> That's not bad. 21 okay, is pretty right, good. Yeah. You feel like you managed to somehow steer him towards the right conversation topics. Um, I think through conversation, Perry will remember that Evark was a strange case as the heir to the Cobalt. But he seemed to be more of a paladin in terms of his abilities. Um, there was something there was something unusual about him that obviously never got fully explained. Um, he would explain to you that he finds it easier to channel his spells through the weapon to then kind of trick his aura into uh, allowing the weapon to gain the advantages of his aura. Um, I think Peria can learn how to kind of reverse engineer that into her way rather than trying to gain advantage on the, on the melee attacks using spells, gaining advantage of the spells using the melee attacks somehow incorporating your physical abilities into your spells. It's a bit roundabout, but I'll, because of the persuasion check, I'll give you advantage on discovering. I'd say that he provided maybe like 20% of what you, you gained from this. You got okay. the other 80% from Peria having an insight of her own. Okay. Um, so I'll I give you advantage then, on your next thing. I will think wisdom feel, wisdom or intelligence feels like the right ability to reverse engineer I agree that. that sounds good either would work a lot either right. with advantage 
coins are the same. Mm -hmm. Hiya! Yeah. 18. Yeah. Thank you. You just met the DC. Bless. <laughs> For the last. <laughs> because that was kind of a stretch, all things considered. I, I had to keep it a little bit of a high DC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. With four successes versus two failures, you succeed over your three month period, not only in learning uh, one of your mother's spells, but maybe through the practice of that spell itself, you find that Aura is very flexible. And something maybe discussing with Naren too is that, except for maybe Bartoon, nobody in all of Elkest history has ever been able to finitely say, I understand Aura completely. It's something that's always been a bit of a mystery. There's a lot of flexibility in what Aura can do, where it comes from, how it is. And to say that a red Aura can only impact the muscles seems strange. You use your body to cast spells. You use your muscles to intone somatic components and to use materials. Wouldn't having better reflexes for the somatic components help your spells as well? Isn't the body still part of spell casting? Aren't you still channeling your ether? You find a way to use True Crimson Aura to bolster your physical vessel when casting spells. You may now apply the damage increase to spell damage as well while in the True Crimson Aura. But to do so, you must use, an ex you must use Aura Shift. So you must expend Ooh, the aura sweet. from aura shift. Okay. So, I think... Yeah. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. Can I request a break suit for food because I am starving? Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be wrapping up the A team very shortly. Um, then we'll switch over to B team because unless anyone else had... Uh, what was, any, was there anything else anyone had really to do? Um, my thing was just everybody needs to. We need to come together and be like, So, what's the plan for when we get off the ship? <laughs> that will be another session. Yeah, <laughs> we, will, we will have we will have one more session on the boat of this team, uh, kind of wrapping up the second half of the trip. You guys can still be doing your stuff, but we'll have mm. uh, one more session before arriving at Bardest. This is just the preliminary getting an idea for what you guys accomplished as a whole. Um, but if there's nothing else you guys were trying to, like, long-term accomplish. Ah, uh, sure. Megan, were there any more term. messages you were... I have a lot of mirrors and scries. I can send those to you. We could comp we could do those, but let's take a break first before yeah. we get to those. And then when we... Oh. We'll, we'll come back from the break around 7-ish, seven 7-10. Seven, okay. Give everyone 30 minutes um to go get some eat you know stretch relax and when we come back we'll wrap up what peria has to do on the boat and then we'll shift over b team will be very brief <laughs> we'll be very very brief uh and okay. then that'll wrap it up for the night so I have we'll take like, a break and i have a, like one or two messages i want to send but it's, to, it's okay. to the same we'll... person okay mm -hmm. we will role play all of that out in about 30 minutes all right so Sounds i'll see good. you guys then yep all right okay all right, Mira, we'll see you in a little bit. We'll be back. Quick break. All right. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> All righty. I'm into that. <laughs> okay, so back from the break, we're going to wrap up what you guys had to do or wanted to do uh, to accomplish on your boat trip. So, uh, Mira, you said you had a couple things you wanted. You had like one person you wanted to message or something? Uh, yeah. A single person that I want to message. Is it your girlfriend? No. Yeah, we... Yes. <laughs> now, I can, I can make sure of something by using the sending spell instead of the stone first. Just okay. so I can put my mind at ease about someone else having Who the you're... stone. Right. Understood. Understood. <laughs> Who that makes I'm sense. Really... Who's going to pick up the phone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let me pull this up. Um, hello. How are you doing, Galise? It has been a bit since we have talked. I hope you are doing well. 
I'm just gonna start with that. <laughs> okay. A uh, bit of a delay before. Oh! Uh, hello. Was expecting through the rock, not in my mind. Uh, it's new. I'm good. Should we keep doing it this way? I believe this is safer. And you can even turn over the stone to your boss and not get in trouble. Uh, uh, is that it? Also, what have uh, what you've heard? Dorst. Dorn. 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 I'm sorry. Dorn, gotcha. not Dorst. No problem. Uh, if you insist, feels a bit limited, but okay. Dorn? Um haven't heard much sort of vanished why do you ask um leviathan was successful with his prayers we ran into him and dorn he is Doing well. Wasn't sure what Shit, this is uh, that's twenty-four. What T tell <laughs> I'm confused. Uh say he's doing well. Is he there now? Did he defect or Prisoner? Question mark. <laughs> uh, so I can technically cast this four times a day if I upcast. Yeah, so you've done twice now. So, yeah. so two more. Two more. Just use a damn stone. <laughs> no, because I feel this is safer. Hey. Um As nice as the unlimited is, I feel like people could eavesdrop easier on a physical thing. Um, not with now. D tried to kill me, sister. All of us. <laughs> but was twisted by... Italos. Is that what you meant? Uh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Twisted by Italos and the Order. loud cars. Oh, I just heard that, yeah. <sighs> um, do you know where he is now? It would be really helpful. Captain's been a little worked up. Could earn me some points. <sighs> Man, that should be a persuasion for for her versus Mira, man. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just gonna make my own roll here. Okay. Is it a will? It's willpower. No, we don't have that anymore. D thirty. Okay. Huh. That's, a pretty, low, that's huh. a pretty low number. Yeah. Yup. It's a pretty low number. <laughs> Hello. <Hell all. laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um. <laughs> they went with Felix, but I don't. Do I? I don't Do you, uh, know the exact location he is at. Do you know the exact location I, he's I at? I don't think. We don't even know exactly where he's at, to be fair. 
I mean, you can say whatever you want. I mean, she might just do an insight check if you were lying. But um, truthfully, the most you know is he's going to the snowmen. Right. That you are turning him over to Frost. And even with being stupid, I don't think Mira would be that stupid to say. Don't think so, but that's your call. That's really what she wants to divulge. Because <laughs> actually, for some reason, I was... For some reason, I thought he went with Felix. Um, uh, he did, briefly, and then... Um, I forget, that I, was... No, no, I, I, he got... The first teleportation circle, I think, was to uh, the the... Vagabond's tree. Right, right. So then, scratch um, that, because I said he was with Felix, so scratch that entirely. Um, because I misspoke then, because he didn't go I'm with not... Felix, he went with, he went to the, okay. Okay, um, so you can redo your latest message then. Yeah. Just to last where... I was, yeah, I was thinking he, I thought he went with Leviathan for some reason. Mm -mm. Um. No, Leviathan's the only one that went back to Renati with, uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, he is with our allies. They're bringing him back to good health. He was deeply decayed by what the Order did. He may not trust us, but we care. Okay, a little vague, but I get it. If not a prisoner, I guess it's up to him then. Uh, that's one more message. Um, but how? Well, oh. oh, she's go, still no, go going. Ahead. Okay. No. Um, well, let me know if you learn more. I hope he's okay. Could be prisoner. Depends on his actions, I suppose. I am not sure. Yeah. Um... How is finding us going? <laughs> <laughs> kind of with like a little cheeky, I know the answer. Could be better. Things have gotten complicated here mm -hmm. I like that. shouldn't tell you but who cares <laughs> had a bit of a success recently higher ups seem happy got some sort of necklace from an enemy or something don't know. Doesn't sound good. <laughs> Necklace from an. Can Mira uh, just do an intelligence check yeah, to see if she knows think. what she might be talking yeah. about? Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Perry. Because yep. I can't think yep. of anything. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. It's very vague. But, uh, is there, I mean, is, uh, give me some direction other than Michael, just give me the answer, you know? <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, okay, so, necklace from... What necklace of importance? Perry still has her necklace. Which necklace? The one with 
uh, her the one that uh, uh, the one that uh, with a twenty one intelligence, I will tell you that she does not. Mm -mm. She left that with a Soren months ago. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the one containing the daughter of yeah. your oracle. Yeah, that, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's my direction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, is is it? Do, do I... I? I'm not telling you like fainted no, yes no, or no, 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 but you can infer what you'd like sure. from what I just told you. Great. Okay. Uh... <laughs> no. All right. Uh, no. no. All right. No, I refuse nope. to believe it. Well, I have to wait another day to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to leave it off. So All right. I'll let Peria do some messages. Cool, Peria. <laughs> While I All scream. Right. Rewinding back to our first month voyage. Yes, yes. I want to message Carl, the oh. legendary blacksmith. Whose name Carl. has a real name. <laughs> oh, okay, Carl. It's in my notes. It's Carl. It's, it's oh, Carl. Carl. And everyone just calls yeah. him Carl. Yeah. Um, I will refer to him as Carl then. Um. <clears throat> Hello, Cario. Bonus points. Wanted to <laughs> check back in with you about Anvil. Unfortunately, can't physically check in after our agreement. Occupied on a very long ride. Remind me real quick about the anvil. The, it was for the and we gave them the coal fire anvil. Right. We were supposed to check in with a month to see oh how my. the it worked as far as like making stuff for him and selling short right duration right. blades. I have it somewhere in my notes. Where is the next question? Um, I don't remember if that was before or after <laughs> the werewolf stuff. I, like uh, I think after. It was when you guys came back to Renati cool. before going to Dane. Pretty much. Oh, here it is. Dress bones. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Yes, very important necklace uh, that Peria had that has her sister's like soul within it. Uh, kind of an important thing. I didn't write thing. it down. Okay. For the details, um, I would have to go back and watch the episode to yeah. get like a clearer idea on what the exact deal was. But I think it was basically he was going to try to sell some like, yeah. like basically. We were licensing it. Licensed, yeah, yeah. And you guys would get some, some profit from it if exactly. he made a profit. Right. Um, uh, his reply Wait, would be... Uh, still sort of working out a market for it, but seems to have interest. The uh, Adventurer's Guild in town, those guardians seem to have use of temporary magic weapons. Come back sometime. We can discuss profits. Great. I'll send him a message saying, sounds good. See you in like six months, months whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever we so get there. A lot. A while. Wow. I'll, see you. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. But thanks for holding on to ah. it for us. Appreciate you. <laughs> I just ch I just checked chat. I would like to make one clarification. Vivian is not Peria's sister. It's Peria's yeah. paramour. Paramour. I say sister. They acted like sisters. They Very thought they sisters. were sisters for a brief oh, period and then found out they are not. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. And so it's just gross. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Anyways, moving on. Well, it's not uh, anime. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other person I wanted to message was Tolo. Um, real quick. Okay. With the rock, I guess. So I don't know the spells. Yeah, with the rock. Sure. Um, hey, how's Bartoon's journal reading going? 
Anything juicy? I don't know why I'm counting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you used to do it? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, he would get back. Um, it's going well. Um, fruitful. Lots of information. Uh, he definitely did have other laboratories. Um, remind me, where are you going now? Bardest. Bardest. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let me see. <laughs> well, I don't really know, um, a geographic location uh, for Bardest specifically. He keeps referencing something about um, he took water from his mother's lake. Uh, something about about that near his lab in Bardest. Some some source of holy water he was working with with crafting his potions. Um, if that helps at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Definitely mm -hmm. helps. Chat some yeah. people later. Well, keep me posted on the updates. We're on a super long, boring boat ride, so you have time. Wonderful. <laughs> I will keep you posted. Great, thanks. Appreciate you. Appreciate you too. I hope people okay. tell you that often, Tolo. They, they really, really do. You. They really do say it enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. All right. Those are my immediate messages, but I have scrying and mirrors, so I can okay. wait if other people. No, it's have okay. Other things. Uh, if if other people have other things, we can go to them. Does anyone have other things? Uh, towards the end of the three months, I would like to send a message back to um, Silben. Okay. Uh, hello. Um. How has the progress been going uh, with the feathers? I was able to make healing arrows of a kind with them. Okay. Um. Oh, hello, Mira. Going well. Glad to hear. I think I have an idea. These feathers seem infused with life essence. I think we could create a bowstring. I've been working on it a bit. I know teleport is hard in Bardest. Find time. Come see me. So, okay. just make a note to see Sylvan about potential new bowstring. Bowstring. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Medea would come up to Peria and be like, so, probably around near the end of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, has anybody tried, you, you've been, you guys have been talking with your rocks and your you know, your mind and everything. Has anyone tried to contact Tithing recently? Well, I was going to scry on him. I also want to talk to Perry at some point. Oh my god. We'll get, wants we'll get to, to all of it. Right. Well, so popular. Um, okay. Would you like to scry on Paizane in response to that question? Um, Medea, may I borrow, um, Wind and Horl, please? Yes. Alright, thank you. I would like to scry on Pisin. <laughs> Using Wind and Horl okay. as my You have the um, most, friend. honestly, you have the most, like, of all the categories. You have something of him. You mm -hmm. have, uh, your personal intimate knowledge of him. Um, yes, please. So, you have, uh, familiar he has a plus zero to his save um no, things that would prevent so, or negative five to his save scrying no i believe it's the plus zero like he doesn't get a bonus on the save modifier. oh no you're right familiar is yeah. minus five i know it's the okay 
God. I, I I pulled up the actual site one because it's got a table. <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah. really weird. Minus five. Yeah. Uh, possession is minus four mm -hmm. to his save modifier. So he has a minus four on his save. Uh, yes. Minus oh gosh. Nine. Minus nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He has a minus nine to his wisdom save. Hmm. Wisdom. Let me go to Pisces <laughs> cheat to see what this will be like. Minus nine to his <laughs> one wisdom save. Mm. So I'm just going to subtract nine from this roll. Hmm. He did natural 20, admittedly. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> yeah, he did. Still doesn't make it. But still doesn't make it. So, just for reference, it literally was impossible for him, as even with a natural 20, brings him down to a 12. <laughs> so, because uh, of, of the, the nature of saves and, and such not being affected by crits, I will still say this fails. Although, well, I'd do it the next day. boy, that really just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the sake of the fact that it doesn't matter over the course of, like, th three months, you'd eventually get him. He'd have to roll a natural 20 every day for 90 days. You're going to eventually scry on him. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I will know where you are. Okay. Uh, I do need to ask, at what you. I have to ask, at what when? point in the journey do you do this? Um, well, it was towards the end, so I would say, like, yeah. month three. Somewhere in month three, like, within okay. maybe two weeks of arriving. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just making shit up. Within two weeks. <laughs> Not good or bad, should I? Can you even... How long can you scry for? Mm -hmm. Ten minutes? Ten minutes, yep. And I can count... I can cast it again. Let's see, I'm failing to save. Successful save or failed save. I can cast it okay. twice. Maybe three times per day. Sure, this will mm -hmm. be interesting. So, this is, oh man, I don't know why I don't expect this stuff. I love it. I keep forgetting <laughs> you have Scry. That's amazing. Okay. I'm going to switch the music up real quick. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Music switch. Oh, oh, boy. All right, he's getting tortured. Let's go. I'll have, I'll have sit with Medea. We'll sit in a little crisscross mm -hmm. applesauce with a <laughs> um, uh, double-bladed scimitar between us, and I'll hold her hands just for fun. It's not needed for the spell, sure. but why not? As you... Um, <laughs> You focus on the scry, your mind goes blank for a moment, and then fills with a vision of a deep, deep green jungle. Lush foliage around. And the scry sensor is moving quickly. It's moving very quickly as it's keeping up almost like at a shoulder length, a shoulder height pace with a running Pisane through the jungle. Uh, in his hand is not his ma massive hammer. It is a handcrafted spear. Looks like made of flint and and uh, lem and, and a stick. Like it's it's just a Air. very rudimentary weapon. He is adorned in rags with a lot of it looks like almost like tribal type markings across his body. You do not see the Aurora Echo Stone earring. Uh, the only thing you do see is the one bead tied into his mane that was given from Medea. But you do not see any of his uh, equipment otherwise. As he is running through the jungle, you see that he turns, pivots on a dime, and throws the spear back. The sensor only catches, I think, 10 feet around mm -hmm. the sensor. So the spear disappears out of view, and you hear the sound of a inhuman screech some sort of monster squealing paizane now without the spear reaches into his uh you see like he has like a like a waist cloth and he reaches in pulls out a small flint dagger and charges forward you see the frame of reference of 10 feet begin to pick up as some form of reptilian creature multiple limbs, sharp fangs, almost basilisk-like, like, comes into view as he jumps and just begins stabbing randomly and wildly. The sensor continues. Obviously, battles last, like, a minute, so ten minutes. You get the whole battle of Paizane dodging and attacking and eventually victorious. 
as the battle ends and he stands and retrieves his spear, uh, you see he turns over and says, How many more are there? You hear a voice go, We just got the last of them. We should be on to the temple soon. Fine. Keep up. It's not far now. Uh, and you see a couple of other figures joining in. You don't recognize any of them as they gather around Paizane. Uh, and they begin to run towards uh, something in the distance. You can't quite make out through the 10-foot distance of the scry, unfortunately. Um, you can hear one of them uh, call out to Paizane. So, any idea what we should expect when we get there? No clue. I've never talked to an exile before, so I don't really know what to, what to expect. But it's going to be a battle if I know anything about Zivadon. She's going to make us earn this. Right. Well, we got through everything up to this point. I think we got this. Um, as the sensor picks up and follows, you see it looks like uh, four people fall in line behind Paizane as this group of five move their way through the jungle. Mm. They eventually reach the foot of a large temple, a large stone structure in the middle of this deep, lush jungle. By that point, it's been most of the scrying time, and you see Paizane turn to the other four and say, once we get in there, stay close to me. I don't know what to expect, but we're all going to need to work together to... And the scry ends. Fudge. Shit. Mm -hmm. ah. Is that C oh, team? D team. C team! <laughs> you sail a C team. <laughs> yes, sail C team. Who knows? <laughs> so, Peria. I was narr narrate all of that as I saw it to, um, yeah. um, I almost called you Camille, to Medea. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <laughs> Peria, is there anything else you would like to do regarding this? Medea, what do you think? I don't really want to interrupt him with a message because he seems like he's in the zone and it seems very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd let him go, let him do his thing. Okay. Uh, do you want me to. I can follow for another 10 minutes. I mean, whatever you want to do. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're both concerned uh, about it. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> if you can extend that slot. <laughs> Minus nine to the save. Let's try it again. And uh, that seems fitting. Yeah. <laughs> natural 20 to a natural one. Yeah. To a negative seven. <laughs> I don't even know why I rolled. It's impossible for him, but I just wanted to see if it would be another Fine. natural 20. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as uh, the sensor picks up as you guys have like spent a moment talking to each other mm -hmm. but now you pick up where paizane is walking up the steps to this temple you see there are are a lot of um the or the the architecture is very rudimentary like stacked rough hewn blocks of stone um moss coverage very old old structure and there appear to be um a lot of spears with various skulls and warnings, like totemic warnings all across this thing. Very similar to what you've seen briefly in the Bardestian camp at uh, the Alaran Dunes. Um, you see uh, Paizane, as they reach the, the, this door, uh, take stock of everyone's equipment. Paizane seems to have what looks like uh, a makeshift spear, uh, a little dagger on hand. Uh, you see he kind of like flexes his claws a little bit. Like, he's preparing to use everything in his arsenal to fight. Uh, you do note all the other four that are with him seem similarly equipped with makeshift weapons and armor. Uh, nothing of, like, magical make or even, like, manufactured steel. Um, it's It looks like the Paizane you know over the last few months, like got shipwrecked on a desert island and somehow lost all of his clothes or something is what it looks like. Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, and uh, they seem to be 
collaborating on potential strategies once they get inside. You hear them say, um, well, remorse wasn't too bad, so maybe the Temple of Rebirth will be better. I don't know. Um, do you have any idea what we might expect? No, I, 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 like I said, I've never talked to another exile before. We're not supposed to, and I never thought I'd end up in Exilos. But once we're through this, there's only one more temple left, and then we're in the clear. And you hear one of them ask, so tell us again, how the hell did a claim keeper end up in Exilos? It's a long story, but uh, I didn't I didn't perform my duties for Zivadona. I chose another. See everyone like goes, wow, that's a really stupid decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I get that a lot here. Um But I'm trying to prove that I'm still loyal to Clan Claimed. And then maybe she'll finally listen to me. <sighs> Alright. Let's do this. And they all move into this temple uh, together. You see them striking up flint torches, um, moving into this dark lit, the dark, barely lit temple interior. Um, as soon as they walk in, you feel like you have like eight more minutes of scry. It fades immediately. Magic bullshit. Magic bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. Wow. It sounds like he's on a mission. Short. Yeah. They're hitting up temples. They yeah. um, found remorse. Now they're going to rebirth, and then there's one more after that. They didn't say a name, but they said Exilos. Exilos. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't, can can Medea do a check? I don't think she'd ever think of what that would be. And she's I will allow, from people. <laughs> I will allow a history or wisdom check. Well, can I, can I assist so she has advantage? I'll say that cancels out the disadvantage I was going to give. So a straight oh, history okay. or wisdom check. I'll just do a history check. No, <laughs> no idea. This is definitely not something any of you really have heard of. I will say you are on a Bardestian ship, though. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. ask someone. Bardestian. Bardestian. You can go ask um, Narcoshan. Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where is Narcoshan? Narcoshan's <laughs> somewhere on the boat, uh, potentially on the on the bow. Whatever. We're we're not gonna make it oh. complicated. Oh. Um, you go and find Narcoshan. Um. Uh, and she is there. What do you say? Good. How do you? Evening, afternoon, whatever time the chronometer says. <laughs> Good. Four thirty. Four thirty-seven p.m. on the dot. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, Bardas, I thought. What, what kind of landscape is Bardas? Is it just like deserty? Is it jungly? Ah, is that's a good question. Like I was hoping we could discuss this uh, before reaching landfall, so mm. this will be a good time. Uh, and I'll use this opportunity. I still, I would like to have one session where we do a little bit more boat stuff before. It might end up being that the next full A-team session is like half boat, half arriving at this point, because mm. you guys are getting mm. a lot done on the boat this session. Um, but I will, in advance, show you guys as Narcoshan will take you all to like one of the chambers of the boat, and she will lay out a map of the Bardest Dominion. Ooh. I will put you guys on the Bardest Dominion map. Ooh. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Map, map, map. <laughs> and she will explain that uh, the Bardest Dominion is much larger than it looks. Uh, mm. The map is not necessarily to scale. Uh, for example, the dunes are utterly massive. Um, you can get lost in them for weeks. Uh, there is also a large amount of jungle uh, farther from the deserts. There was a lot more jungle once upon a time, but Zivadona laid waste to a section uh, near Port Paratal. 
now only referred to, referred to as the Scorchlands. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We will be docking at Port Orlin within Dragon Tail Gulf, <laughs> uh, which is the... Mm. Port Orlin is technically part of the city of Devest Orlin, but it is also its own entity as a port. Um, it, he, she lays this out. Uh, what is... You said you have something about the geography of the land. Yeah, I was real quick, real quick on the map. Does it list out like Temple of Remorse, Temple of yes, Rebirth? Yes, it does actually. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Uh, <laughs> no, I was just more curious about like what, to, how to dress appropriately, because I just assumed and hot thought, weather, cold, hot Very weather, much hot, hot, weather. Mm. hot, like a dry heat or sweaty heat. Depends both. on where you go. Uh, central jungle. Bardest, dry heat. North and south, much more humid. Sweet. Got it. Great. Okay. Great. Those temples are cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Love a very it. natural transition. Um, what, what's my special I'm going to have Narkashan give an insight check just for fun. <laughs> 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 wow, look at those! Wow, what fascinating architecture! Oh, we don't have God. temples like that in where oh, I live. No. Oh, oh my God. God. Of course you Get did. out of, of here. Did. I'm going to say, Peria, from the moment you put the map down, you were so focused on those temples. She just kind of gives you a look like, yes, those temples are quite interesting. Any particular interest? <laughs> what are they for? Well, you will hopefully never have to know, but oh. they mm -hmm. are the three temples created to rehabilitate exiles of the oh. clan. If you are found to be guilty of a particular crime against the clan, there are two punishments, death or exile. Oftentimes, exile is considered the worst of the two. You are sent to Exilos on the far side of the continent, as far from the light of Zivadona as possible, beyond the mountain range, and forced to live with nothing amidst other exiles, other criminals of the land. It is a lawless, mostly... <sighs> to say that anywhere in Bardest is lawless is obvious, but even in the main city there is some sense of law upheld. In Exilos, it's chaos. You could be murdered in your sleep for having a nice pair of pants. Oh. And the jungle is filled with very, very dangerous creatures. Very few live in Exilos longer than a year. But if you are of the right mind and ability, Zivadona left steps to return to society. You must first go to the Temple of Remorse, where you will prove that you are ready to return to the clan. The Temple of Rebirth, then, where you are reborn as a member of the clan, but before you could officially return, you must do the third temple. I must admit, I don't really know what... I don't know what each of the temples has, but it's never failed. Any who has managed to go through all three temples has returned to the clan as a steadfast and loyal member. Many die during the attempts, though. How many people have actually completed it? You see, she, actually, she actually takes a moment. Like, well, I can't say that I have the full record, but I've only ever heard of six or seven, really. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> some of us have come to think that they might just be... Um, a way to control the population of Exilos. Like death traps waiting to catch mice. No, Mira, no. <laughs> Shh, Heisen can't Media's die. internally screaming. <laughs> I was also internally screaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I perhaps... I think we've been very forward with each other so far. I think I've also earned a bit of trust. Could I perhaps ask why you're so interested in these temples? Paising is completing the 
footsteps. How do you know this? No, it. don't ask. I uh, don't answer. I think I. Oh, get I didn't it. answer. I think I get it. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, that surprises me. I didn't think that would be her response. Well, he was a claim keeper. Him, I guess, right? <laughs> it means that she's showing him mercy. Yep. Instead of just killing him. Hmm? Unfortunately, there's nothing really you can do to assist him. At this point, it's up to him and whatever other exiles have decided to attempt. Which perhaps the party might be making a few of. Oh, so if you guys want to start thinking of some characters that don't rely on magical items and such. <laughs> mm -hmm. My brain already started going, okay, so sure. I got exiled because I was a mage who... <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. I was, I was particularly vague on who you saw on the screen. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Four other people. <laughs> Four. Four. Humanoid-shaped masses, potentially. Strange. In before one's a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> they were out of view. <laughs> Yeah, they're out of view. You just saw the human front half. Yeah. <laughs> Scry. Anyways. Um, Artificer. No. No, Amir. That's the opposite. <laughs> they make their own stuff. Yes. I mean, yeah, I guess technically, yeah. but ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. so, yes. Uh, yeah, that you, you, you managed to get insight ahead of time of what the Paizane subquest will be. Congratulations, cool. now you have some time to think. Yay! <laughs> He's happy he oh, <laughs> yes, no, he is not dead yet. And that yeah, whether yeah. he dies will maybe be up to D team. Mm. Ah, D -team. Uh, we'll see. Dead team. Okay. Narkashan would would uh would oh, God, try to put your mind at ease, but he was a claim keeper. I've seen him fight, he's strong. Um with the spear. Mm. Yeah, he's good. He'll be fine. He's nice. He's a child of Bardest. He can handle a, a few weeks without a magical hammer, I'm sure. Definitely better with it, though. <laughs> He'll be good. He's, he's good. He's good. He has his aura back. Mm. No, he doesn't. Just kidding. Well, he has an aura. He has a aura. Never mind. His is lost forever. Um. <laughs> Wow. Well, the soul. Yes. <laughs> anyway. there is. But yes, you're uh, working on it. would also explain, you know, um, the various landmarks of of Bardest to you guys while you have it here. Uh, Petrichor Basin is a very dangerous stretch of land that has acid rain and uh, yeah. is home to many uh, basilisk type creatures. Um, the Bardest Dunes are death zone, terrible, terrible death zone, horrible place. Uh, port Paratal is the main port for uh, the Karanis Isles and is frequented by a lot of pirates and sailors. Um, yeah, this is this is where you guys are headed. <laughs> so, somewhere in the distance, Chew. Sounds like my kind of play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I will uh, move us back to the. Not exactly a vacation destination. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like my I like my continent better. <laughs> I like I like better. Yeah. Mm. So uh I'll move the music back because we're out of the super tense yeah. time. Yeah, for the most part. Back in it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yep. Um, I have lots more scribes, but if someone else wants to go, um... If there's anything else anyone else yes. would like to do, no, I don't... Hey, Patty, Yes, Kira. <laughs> Hi. Um... Next day. So... Um... I fa uh, I, uh, have, um... <laughs> that necklace you used to have... Oh! We're <laughs> doing this! I mean... Yes? Uh, what about it? Apparently, um, I have learned that it is 
come into the hands of the um, higher ups in um, <sighs> in uh, oh god, what do I always want to think? Unicorn Knights. That one. Well, the, the order. The, the new oh, the order. order. Yeah, right. The order. the order has gotten their hand on it. The messages Orin immediately. <laughs> 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 Shit! It's Orin. What's going on? <laughs> do you not still have Dibby? Why didn't you contact me? <laughs> Leave a treat! Ah! <laughs> That's the message. Um, so <laughs> this, so at this point, considering the mixed timeline, yeah, we're at the this end. is for, this is towards the end of the three months. You I'll do not get a reply from a Soren. Shit. Oh. All right. Um, I'm gonna um, try. Cool. I guess. This is fine. Oh, I a different to... plane of existence. Maybe oh. I don't know. I don't think I have anything of a Soren. Oh, no! My Phoenix Breastplate was from a Soren. Was from a Soren, that's correct. I'm gonna scry on the Soren. Okay. So, <laughs> even though he's my close personal friend, he's probably only a familiar. <laughs> uh, I will say, the first line is, you can see in here a particular creature you choose is on the same plane of existence No, I know. As you. I'm gonna try it, because mm. I don't know if maybe he got moved to, to our Understood. plane, or if he's still in Vilium. Understood. This is why I said to take the short way. <laughs> Becky, I don't disagree. <laughs> I know. Too late now. Chris no, wanted to fight, but my character was like, ah, peace and relaxation. Yeah, you got some really good stuff done. I got it. We got great months. shit done. Yeah. You would not have gotten these roles otherwise because yeah. the short route would have been filled with encounters. There wouldn't have been yes. as much time. You would have had like a week of time yeah. skip. Yeah. yeah. Correct. It would have been. I would not be doing um, as many like subplot stuff for the coming sessions because there would be more stuff for us to do on the show. Yeah, but yeah. you guys chose the low and slow. Oh, yeah. um, for so, sure. Pros and cons. Uh, actually, actually, this is an interesting point. Uh -huh. That's true. So minus, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you're familiar with him. You know him well. Oh, you have a possession that's minus four, so minus nine. Friend. <laughs> Is real. <laughs> so considering the plus minus. Okay. Straight roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go. <gasps> okay. Your okay. scry picks up in the Invilium, strangely. Ooh. Oh my god. You know that the Invilium should count as its own plane. As the image picks up, you are looking over the shoulder of a Soren as he sits at the, what you imagine, like the, the control for the divinity drive. Um, you remember being in his, in, in Kite's sanctum. Mm -hmm. That constant, like, light of the two blue stars collapsing in on and reverting. Mm -hmm. It's pitch dark. Oh, inside. shit. And you see only the light from the screens on his his display. Um, you see a very heavily battered and beaten Isorin. As he is trying to, it seems like, work on this drive at some in some way. You also do see... His aura is heavily decayed. Oh no. How the fuck did they get there? There's a door. Yeah. <laughs> There's a door. There's a door. <laughs> yeah, but you have to put input as very specific code. It's almost like Castellus has been in there before. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh shit. He was a gar um He was an Aurora yeah. Elite. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's almost like once he learned that maybe she was in a place, that Vivian was in a place unreachable to him, he realized there was only maybe one place in the world that well, could be that he's been before. Yeah. Well, it's it just, took a while. It took him yeah, a while to work it, it out. But it was yeah. just a matter of time, really. Well, sure. It's three months. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess... More than that, since no, you guys know. talked in Gardas. Five at this point. Yeah. Mm. Um, I can send another spell 
because it's not in concentration. I'm going to send a message to Rose. Okay. Urgent. Isorin, greatly wounded. If able, get to Invilium ASAP. It there looks is... bad. <laughs> there is a moment, and then you hear, understood, and then that's it. I'll hang out for the last ten minutes. <laughs> see if she shows up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as you, as you keep the scry on. Yeah. Um, towards, like, the very end of the ten minutes, uh, you hear a voice calling out, Soren! Soren! And you see, hear footsteps approaching, and you do see, out of the corner of your eye, uh, the wing of a dragon and a person running up as the sensor fades. Well, fuck. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> last crazy thing. For my scrying, um, Vivian, I have her daggers, and I am familiar. Okay. Uh, Before we do that, is there anything yeah. anyone else would like to do on this boat trip? Yeah, I this is have... important shit. Oh, I had cute things I wanted to do later. <laughs> or earlier. Uh, she did have only one more thing. Okay. She wanted to try to get in contact with Kieran side of her if she could uh how would you like to try this i guess through some sort of like meditation while in void sense okay um is there a more tangible thing you'd like to try to do uh let's see what am i gonna send a message Yeah, this works for everything, you know? <laughs> it really does. I mean, sending is just such a universal, just like, you send a message, and if they're yeah. there, you know them. I, I, I need to pick it up somehow. <laughs> it's very nice. Well, I technically, I could cool. send a message, you could counterspell it, and then you could yeah. send. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. So if you um, need to send to somebody... Yeah. That's true, actually. <laughs> what they want to be private about, yeah. <laughs> I never think to use it that way. It's always, oh, I need damaging shit on. No, that. that's fair. Actually, that's a very right. interesting way to to use the the spell drinker. <laughs> Daybreaker has radiant properties. Uh huh. Maybe she can try to focus her meditation through that. Okay. Um. I would like I to know, that... Radiant and Celestial are not, like, synonymous. I, I know, I know. But the... I know this is going to sound strange, but... With that, using Void Sense, and then... Crucial <sighs> Seppuku, just, like... Don't focusing... think that's how Crucial Seppuku really works. So... <sighs> Focusing on... Uh, I don't know how I word this. I don't know. You're talking about stabbing yourself in order uh, to focus better on meditating. It's, it's weird. Excuse us of in itself is weird. Yes, very much Stab so. Stab yourself and you get advantage of the next roll like, with the yeah. Um. When do you feel the most... At peace and calm when you're fighting. <laughs> sure. I guess. <laughs> and hurting. Using her blood as some sort of a catalyst? I'll, I'm just going to let you know, AJ, unless you have a really solid way, Q spends uh, the, the time on the months trying to connect to a possible thing maybe still inside of her. Mm -hmm. You don't get anywhere with it. Okay. Unless you have some actual like ability or... You're using a spell that somebody helps you with. Wait. Nothing Darren. particular. Darren might be able to help me. How? She's, she's very uh, knowledgeable on aura. Yes, she is. The cure is part of her. Maybe she could use her aura to connect to it. Okay, you go to Naren. She's going to ask, why do you want to connect to this creature? 
couple of reasons. I want to see how it's doing and if it might have any idea what's going to happen once I restore the last aura. Okay. Um... I don't really know how to do this. Uh, I'm not sure because your aura right now is a borrowed aura. Mm -hmm. You have one from an aura cage. It's not even your aura. Yeah. I don't really know how to... This is something very new to me. Uh, some celestial creature living inside of you. It... Think of them as ley lines. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to do with the crook. <laughs> I mean, maybe? Magic, anything's possible. Magic is bullshit. Magic it is bullshit. <sighs> we only have fifth level slots in our group. Yeah, Naren's not much better off. All right. Um, have you been able to speak to this beast before in this way? No, I've only... I spoke to it, I think, like, twice. Once, back when I was still Arcus, I was able to manifest what looked like the Violet Emperor, but was also part of the Kirin. And then the Kirin appeared to be in the middle of a fight. Hmm. Back when I didn't have an order at all. Right. Well, that probably answers my ability to assist if it's not attached to your aura. Yes. I would say that someone from Susail who has a more understanding on the Kirin and your relation to it as Arcus might have more insight. Honestly, Q, and I mean this with all due respect, I don't even know what you are, really. Yeah, I've been trying to figure that one out myself. I could try to use my crook. Not even mine. Bartoon's crook. Though I'm still learning how to use it. Morgana had a much keener understanding of the crook's abilities than I, as she used it for far longer. I have spent most of this boat trip trying to hone its abilities, though. That is what Naren's uh, uh, time on this boat was. Um, I'll see what I can do. And I will roll a d30. Okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, unfortunately, there is no connection made with the Kirin. Oh, uh, thanks for trying. Of course. All right, that's all you wanted. Okay. Can I do two cute scries before the? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Who are you? What are you scrying on? Billy. Billy! Billy! Oh, Billy. 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 Oh, Billy. man. Happy, happy Billy. Gosh, where's Billy right now? Uh, <laughs> after after Kaitark blew up. Yeah. Um, just some random point in the trip, you... I'm not even going to do a roll. I mean, you've got, like, first hand at nine. least. Minus... Yeah, minus nine. Five. It's impossible. It's impossible for him to, to succeed at this point. Um... Billy is, uh, <laughs> your vision clears. This is an idea I've had swimming around for a while, so I'm glad to get, like, this out there. That's awesome. Your vision clears in a library. Book library. walls, wall books. And you see uh, a little a little boy with 
a mess of dark curls, sitting, reading from a stack of what look like picture books. And uh, you hear him go, this one's great. It's got like forests and stuff. I love this stuff. And you, and you see another boy enter frame with a swath of rainbow colored hair. <gasps> carrying oh, an armful of snacks. Like, mm. I got these from the... I got these from the pantry. Don't tell dad. And you just and you see young Ravi <laughs> dumps all these cakes and cookies down on the floor and you hear <laughs> boys <laughs> open the door. <laughs> <laughs> so how long do you think that door will keep the guard in? I don't know. I I think I erased the doorknob so <laughs> forever, I guess. <laughs> like <laughs> Young Master Ravi, please. <laughs> Please open the door! <laughs> and uh, as you scry, you watch as Billy made a friend in Renati uh, as he's now living there with Cloak. And him and Ravi are little partners in crime. Oh, that's literally so the next person I was going to scry on. Did you see that? Oh, two for one. Okay. I just want to check in on little nerds, little, little scraps. No, they're not nerds. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said nerds, but I meant <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Bunch of dorks. Scamp. There we go. As, yeah, Robbie's Aww. using his new strange artistic magic he's learning and apparently somehow locked a door. Kind of like creative arcane lock. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, he just erased the doorknob. Oh. Basically. His <laughs> unique <laughs> powers. Yes. Oh, cute. Uh, that was a nice reprieve. Okay, now back to horribleness. What's your? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna do one more scribe before sure. that one in the By middle of the trip. Hand of Armageddon. I know it's a shit oh, roll. God. It's Ew. honestly, I would try it probably for like a week if I could. Okay, I'll do a couple of rolls then for Ooh. you. Because I know his thing this is, is high. Second hand, you've barely met him. I know, it's like, he has a plus, plus five already, so. And you have... Uh, you don't, don't have, have a anything. likeness or a picture. You don't have a possession. I don't... They don't have anything from no, him. No, I have nothing. No, it's really got, just... It's a plus five. It's bad. <laughs> I need to look up some stats real quick. Yeah. From... I have to remember what I used for him. I Me and Becky were that. talking about him earlier today. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. where he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there is another shard out there. We go get yeah. some time. No, actually, he has several Where? shards. Here. Well, he has yeah. several, but there's one more out there that still needs yeah. to be gotten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have to know the name of a creature? Technically speaking, he calls himself the Hand of Armageddon, so... I was thinking that... of his mount. Uh, you only know of it as the Maragorgon, which okay. is a creature, right. like, species thing, but mm -hmm. I'll allow the Hand of Armageddon to suffice for this you don't know who it is no. under like the mask but um it's a wisdom save it sure is, he is a great plus i know oh, no. i need him to roll that one uh yeah you kind of do <laughs> but i'll give you a couple of rolls all right jeez that's a massive plus okay all right yeah. what's your dc 17 you need a four or lower Oh, All right, here we go. Actually. <laughs> here we go. Close. Yep. So how you said you can okay. do like a solid week? Yeah. Then I'll do seven rolls for you. Great. Second roll. Okay. Okay. Third roll. Wrong direction, but like. Right. Cool. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do the yeah. opposite Get now. <laughs> Get it out. Another seven. <laughs> okay. Oh okay. God. We're getting better. F We're getting better. <gasps> hey. Is that no? He still made it. No, he still oh. made it. Oh, oh. No, he needs okay. a three. How many are we on? Two Is more. Fifth? Two more. Yeah, two more. Come on. And bitch. last roll. Last one. Roll that net one. Roll that net one. <sighs> All right. Well, so, we tried. a solid week straight of attempting yeah. scries just keeps failing, 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 failing. Uh, you feel like maybe if you can get like a piece of him, like a armor or weapon or some some, some more information on him, yeah. Um. It was worth a try. Mm. Question, Peria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has the runes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our runes count. 
Has um, he had him before? No. <laughs> I guess he hasn't had It has to be something of his, so if you took a rune from him, maybe, okay. but mm -hmm. um, possession or garment, likeness or picture, body part, lock of hair, bit of nail, or the like. Yeah. Um, no. I didn't take anything of his from the no. fighting him. So. Mm. so the next time we fight him, let's make it a point to just kill him right now. Yeah, the, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. I I just want to move on. Let's just get let's just get to it and be done with it and then I'm done. No okay. more. What's the so, awful? Just just finish. Rip the band-aid off. Okay, so what is your last you're scrying on oh, Vivian? Right? Vivian. I got her daggers. Okay. I know her. It's fine. So it's a minus nine, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so probably. <laughs> okay. It's the mental math. Natural one. Yo! Thank you. <laughs> Where is that on Armageddon? <laughs> right? Seriously. I'd rather have this one, no offense. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's true. I get it. I'm gonna cut the music real quick. Mm-hmm. Gonna, I'm going to say this is towards the end of the boat trip. Um, and after this is done, we're going to cut over to B-Team to wrap up the night. Mm. Peria, as you... This has to be towards the end because you didn't learn about this whole thing until the end of the three months, just about. Mm -hmm. As you prepare the scry and you reach out, your mind fogs then there's clarity. You hear the sound of harsh footsteps on cold stone. Familiar sound of walking through the Order's hallways. Tough-heeled boots plopping through an echoey hall as the vision centers over a well-dressed in dark violet robes hair tied back, woman, roughly her own age. She walks head straight forward. She reaches a door, which she knocks lightly on. You hear a voice from within say, come in. She opens. You see a few daggers on the side of her belt and a familiar necklace around her neck as Vivian steps into a chamber. You see what looks like a modest but comfortable bedchamber. Something you've probably spent a lot of time in, where you slept and rested after you graduated from being just a, one of the numbers to having a bit more responsibility. This is this is an acolyte's, no, an agent's chamber. This is not the communal rest areas of the acolytes. Something that you and Vivian both attained eventually. Privacy. Something that was rare in the Order. The room is not empty. As you see sitting on the bed, in fine robes, is Castellus, who stands as she enters and holds his hands out. You see Vivian walks forward and wraps her hands, her arms around Castellus. Your sensor focuses over the shoulder of Castellus. You see Vivian's face, which is impassive. No smile, just like a cold determination as you see her go. It's good to see you again, Father. How are things progressing? See, she pulls back. Castellus, a warm smile. It is very good to see you again, my daughter. I apologize for... Well, I apologize for the lack of information of late. How are you recovering? You seem to be ambulating well? Yes, I... 
feel all of my range of motion returned. I think I'm ready to go into the field again. You see, it was, oh, no, no, we're not going to be sending you out on missions anymore. You're far too important now. Now that you've fully realized your destiny, it's time for us to prepare for the end of things, and the beginning of everything else. I trust it's all been explained by now. You see, she finally cracks a small smile. Yes. And I understand why you kept me in the dark for so long. My loyalty is as it ever was to the Order, my father. I will let you insight check through the scrying oh, sensor. Yeah, I know. How I with know advantage. Play <laughs> three. <laughs> Whether it's your connection to Vivian, even through this sensor, or your training as an agent, you're not sure. But through her small smile and her demeanor, you can tell it's all an act. You can tell that Vivian is, you feel almost scared. You think maybe she's falling into her training as an agent to survive right now in the face of the enemy. With a, with a 23 insight on a natural 18, you feel that Vivian is playing a role You see Castellus hold her at arm's length for a moment. As long as you understand, that is what is best. Have you heard from Villas yet? No. Um, I believe that my role as the Apostle of Mercy has ended. I think I was dead too long. I am sure it will not be an issue when the time comes. See, like, he looks a bit concerned. That is very strange. I thought for certain you would... No matter. What matters is that you are here. And soon... Soon we will put you to good use for the better world. As the star marked one destined to, to remake this world. See, she nods. Of course, Father. It is what I was born for. Have, um, has there been any word on the traitor? See, Castell goes, nothing of concern. As far as we're aware, she is staying away from the Order business. I'm guessing she realized that she's out of her leak. Although we did ha have a res disturbing report of a warehouse in Valertana disappearing, and I can't help but feel that there was something to do with her, but... <laughs> doesn't matter. We're not far now. We know the remaining identity of the last two apostles. Though, we still haven't heard anything on truth yet. That is a bit concerning. Right now, we just need to stockpile our resources and prepare for the end. It's not far now, my dear. I know, Father. Well, I shall, um... I suppose I shall return to my duties, then. Oh, no, come, sit, stay. Now that we can finally be father and daughter, <laughs> it's good for us to connect. I apologize, Auroracle, but I am afraid I am needed elsewhere. It would not do for the others to start to gossip. I suppose. It is good that you are diligent. I knew that you would never betray us. Of course. You see Vivian steps away from Castellus. The sensor 
staying with Vivian, but keeping him in frame. You see, as she turns her back, his smile immediately disappears. Mm. Fuck! Oh, yo, no. <laughs> he's not an idiot. <laughs> <Shatter>. <laughs> <laughs> ah! yeah. And as she is looking towards the door and he's looking towards her back, you see her turn her head slightly. I look forward to seeing you again, though. We have so much to catch up on. And as she says that, Peria, mm -hmm. her eye catches the sensor. Yeah! 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 yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and you see a small flame of aura in her eye. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Aura sight. Oh, aura she sight. probably has aura sight. Oh, I'm yeah. sure we have a lot of catching up to do. You see, Castellus goes, Yes, I'm sure. I will send you messages later in this week. And as the scry ends, we will now fade out from the boat wow. trip. And I will Our put us vision over. going across thousands of miles of water and also months into the past <laughs> from the boat trip. Even probably a week in the past from the boat trips initiated, we're going to go back a little bit mm. to when the uh, the the party met with Le Bishop Leviathan in the Sparage. God, seventy maybe, <laughs> sixty nine. I think it was sixty nine. I think it was the holy episode sixty nine. <laughs> All right, exactly. Uh... Put us over to the other Finn, Felix, yes, uh, Clementine, me. grayed out, and Tierbrin. Yeah. Or As my favorite we throw, hardly like, knew them. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, as the up. party uh, divided ways uh, with Felix's group uh, mm. and th the main group, Felix's group, Felix, Tyrion, and uh, Finn mm. took Leviathan, Bishop Leviathan, this captured member of the Order, back to the town of Renati in the Holy Land. Mm. This is also immediately after that same party left to go talk to the president of the Dane mm -hmm. and did not manage to accomplish that. So as a quick recap, we are back in the city of New Renati in the Holy Land about a day after you guys left initially to go and broker peace with the Dane Republic. You are now returning with a prisoner. <laughs> Let's back, back it up a little. So I'm gonna put us back in New Renati. I gotta move right, these I gotta change tokens my character. around. Finn. Yep, yep. Here we go. <laughs> yes. I'm not Medea. Okay. Nope. Felix, normal voice. <laughs> nice. Mine so, is a deeper voice. <laughs> um, as you guys appear in the uh the teleportation circle at the manor, um, hmm. you guys pop out uh, in the secured room for the circle, uh, Leviathan in tow. And uh, you guys proceed to uh, <laughs> Lord Dior's chambers mm -hmm. 24 <laughs> hours after having been sent out to end the war with, with the Dane. Um, we're going to throw... Efficient. <laughs> well, <laughs> not efficient, really, but... Very, very efficient. Uh, yeah. As you guys move through the manor, we're the uh, Camellia Vanguard, right? Can I get thrown on the map? Super oh, hard? absolutely. We'll put you somewhere. You know, since you don't exist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just see darkness. I don't see. I shed. see. Darkness imprisoning me. Oh, and I see. <laughs> Perry is not here. Pay <laughs> okay, that. All right. Uh, as you guys approach, see the guards uh, immediately, like, look, like, didn't. Yes, we need to speak to Dior. Just knock the door. Uh, my lord, you have visitors. <sighs> Who is it now? The Camellia Vanguard, sir. What? <laughs> <laughs> Send them in. Uh, and you, <laughs> he opens the door as uh, you guys enter with your prisoner of sorts. As the door closes, uh, I'll carry it on as well. As the door closes behind, uh, you see Dior, like, sitting at his desk. He looks like he was in the middle of writing, like, a stack of papers. 
Yes. Are you that good? No, we didn't stop yes. the war, but a lot has happened, and I'll it's kinda... been twenty-four hours. Uh, yes, it has. A lot can happen. Um, who's this? <laughs> Pointing to Leviathan at the back. This is one of the old. Uh, is Exarch the right quote right now? Not Exarch. Uh, uh he was. Uh, he was kind. His his rank was unusual. He was a handler of agents. He was like, he was like a manager of agents. Basically, I mean, he wasn't an exarch though. He wasn't quite at that level. Um, this is Leviathan, a previously high ranked within the the order. Order, yes. Um, See, Dior, order. Dior like puts his pen down. The same Bishop Leviathan posing in the Chitin Church of Calcifel. Yes. He successfully was given passage to attack Peria thanks to his god. And things happened. And he has come with us willingly. I see. I definitely need a full report on whatever has transpired in of course. the last 24 hours. Uh, you see, <laughs> uh, Leviathan steps up. So. What he says is is true. Um, Lord Dior, I come here in the hopes of cooperating fully. Um, I have no delusions that I will be spared some fate. But I know now that the Order is not what it seems. They use people and they corrupt them. They support people like the Talos, who is a monster. And I have seen consistently time and again through these individuals and the, your other agents that... Perhaps there is another way. I also still believe that I am under the effects of some sort of spell, because I still feel very confused as to how I got to this point, but I'm not sure. And you see, Dior's like, you know, that would make this whole thing make a little bit more sense if there was a spell involved, but I'll take it all, all together. <laughs> okay. Explain, and you guys go into an explanation yeah, of what happened. <laughs> well, very well. I suppose nothing can be done about Dane if he is, in fact, the apostle of hatred. That doesn't yes. sound like it's going to be an easy sell. On no. Stopping war. As much oh. as I want to... Not Dane, but as, as much as I want to go and... <sighs> Kill the other bastard. Yes, I learning that Tark is an apostle is was difficult. Because as we know it, we don't know where truth is. And if I exact my revenge, that just means the end of the world starts. Fantastic. Unfortunately. <laughs> but we can see this as a good thing as well. If both of the remaining apostles are leaders of uh, powerful countries, nations... There's very little chance of them being stabbed randomly. We don't have to worry about some doomsday clock going off without us being aware. If a leader of one of the two nations dies, it'll be something we're aware of. Yes. And something we can prepare for. This is, despite how it sounds, a very large relief for me. But I understand how you must feel. Uh, Felix, if you need some time... I'm sure you're very concerned about your mother's position as well under President Dane. Yeah. I haven't seen her in quite some time. Well, you could always head back, I suppose, but I would caution you against it if he is as corrupt as he sounds. I will, um, of course, need to speak with... Um, I'm sorry, I've never had a prisoner come so willingly before. Um, Leviathan, 
Y yes, um, I understand if you have uh, doubts, but um, see, he like walks over to the table and he like takes off his sword, puts it down, starts to like take off all of his weapons, puts them on the table. I am fully willing to cooperate with whatever processes you have here. I'm sure they're not going to be quite as rough as they would be in the Order. He's like, no, I believe that you'll find us far more hospitable than zealous cultists. Um, <laughs> see, like, he uh, picks up a small bell and rings it, and you see the guards enter. Please escort uh, Mr. Vost here to a nice, comfortable cell in the prison. He will cooperate fully. Right. Yes, sir. And they both take him away. I just I just start looking through Leviathan's things. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Uh Dior does have like a slight eye on Finn throughout all <laughs> like, this. Like Finn's just like propped up, you know, just like looking at his shit. He has a one of the things is he's at this massive, absolutely gorgeous great sword. <laughs> Uh, studded with beautiful gemstones. The pommel has multiple large diamonds set into it. Um, is there an appraisal that I can be like, hmm? Give me an arcana <laughs> check, I suppose, would be the way to put this. Ah, shit, my arcana's garbage. All right. Or I could say anyway. just a straight perception if you're just trying to perceive how, like, valuable it would be. garbage, but I'll do perception. Right, Natural cool. 20. <laughs> cool. So I'll just let you know. Um, I mean, I was a street rat, kind of. So yeah, you you've you've got like experience on how to like like spot what's what's the easiest what's to good. take off and and you know just quickly sell. Uh, as you're like inspecting the sword, the pommel pops off the end of oh. the sword, uh, and it is a separate item called a power gem pommel that is attached to the end of the sword and has its own like removable diamonds. Uh, it is. Uh, I'll tell you. The sword is worth an incalculable amount of money by Finn's standard. Like, like it has filigree design along the blade, massive gemstones set into it, solid gold hilt. It, this thing is gorgeous, but also he just says, effective. He's like, this is pretty fucking nice. <laughs> down. <laughs> so you just hear Dior say, down. <laughs> Uh, I, just place, I just place it on the table, I guess. <laughs> I, I will f I will figure out what to do with that in due time. <sighs> well, I am sorry to hear that war is apparently still on for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to know, Felix, that I have... I Obviously, it's been 24 hours since we last saw each other, but I'm still leaning towards no longer allying with Tark, which just means this is going to become an all-out four-way war. Yeah, kind of that like. makes the most sense, unfortunately. Hopefully, Peria and Q can manage to bring Zivadona out of it. I'm still waiting on a report from Paizane. I, it's only been a couple days. I need to give it time, but I'm sure that'll bear fruit as well. It's fine. We have a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. Right now, I guess we need to decide what you three should do. That is the question. If you need some time to reflect or to perhaps go and see your mother, I understand, but Time is of the essence these days. Did you have something I in would... mind? Well, we have... I have the other members of the Camellia Vanguard on their own duty. Their search for the gods, the shards, what have you. So... I would like... It feels strange doing this after all this time of being a lord, even, but. My orders for you. To follow the path set by this one, looking at Tyrbrin. 
determine the method, the route, and the materials needed to traverse the void. Ah. Uh. And rescue my daughter. Well, actually, about that, uh, I brought this particular subject up with Leviathan. He might have some insight on an anchor we could use. I will have to question him then. I believe there was also discussion of speaking with Isorin. Yes, I'll have to do that too. Yeah, we'll have to, um, I guess go talk with him. Very well. I want you to know that um, I understand this is a selfish request. I know there is a lot. There's a lot going on, and it seems strange. I would to do this resources. even if you told me not to. I'm more than happy. Good. And Sir uh, Vi Finn, was it? Mm. I understand you have no connection to this matter. As such, I have put aside a uh, notable sum of 450,000 gold pieces. Should you bring my daughter back safely, I am willing to pay this forward. <laughs> Is that an agreeable sum for you, sir? He, he just, uh, <laughs> he needs a moment here. <clears throat> Step up a little bit first, so I, I could hear you properly. What was that amount again? 400. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Give me a persuasion check. I see what yeah. you're going with. <laughs> I see what you're going with. 17. It's only 17. Yeah, that's, not, that's not terrible. <laughs> he looks over to Felix. What would you describe... Sir Finn's skill set as replaceable, irreplaceable. Well, he could do with a bit more. Oh, what's the word? Mm. <sighs> Act. Yes, <laughs> tact is a. Thank I'm not you, asking Tyrion. for his social skills. <laughs> Honest opinion. He was. Useful in combat. I haven't seen support like his before. Looks over to Tierbrin. Your opinion? What do you say? You're, go you're going in and out. Yeah, a little bit. I can't hear you. I am not familiar. Actually, no, Chairman would be. You guys fought together. Yeah, we fought with him. You guys had a whole session of, of yeah. two sessions no, I, together. No, I really I, helped I, with my aura stuff. You <laughs> really did. I'm just... <laughs> with my minstrel diary. Yeah. No, I, I was thinking of Bards, but he would be because... Yeah, no, you were with yes. Julius, for, Julius yeah. for years. <laughs> he... Has... Very useful magics, I will admit. I have known better than him, but oh, he... me too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot deny it has helped. So I appreciate your candor. Though he yes, could uh, do without walking in front of the enemy and announcing the end of song. Yeah, no, I, I, I really <laughs> wish you didn't do that. You literally just gave us away. I mean, it worked, didn't it? <laughs> you got the jump on him. You see, Dior kind of mutters. I feel like that's something Camille would have done. <laughs> <laughs> I believe um, the sum I said was 650,000 gold pieces. Mm, mm, mm. Is that an agreeable sum? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he passes a paper across the table for you to sign. And you Contract. will absolutely sign that shit. Very well. <laughs> you won't even read it. <laughs> he doesn't even barely know how to read anyway. <laughs> then your path is set. 
And with that, we are going to end tonight's episode. <laughs> that was uh, quick. You guys have <laughs> towards the void. Towards the void. I'm going into hell's oh. doors. Okay. As we will, uh, we will pick up next week if everyone's free. I never know anymore. Uh, <laughs> if everyone's free next week, we'll pick up. Not with this team or the other, but next session will be the beginning of the new subplot, as we're going to cover some little stories from across Elcast that are occurring while the party is traveling three months by boat. Yeah. Yep. This next session will be the subplot of the Verdant Claw, Ooh. seeing what happens in the Verdant Territory of Susail, a place we have not been for a long mm, time. Yeah. <laughs> only briefly stopped at, so... Join us next week for a brand new cast of characters and see uh, what happens for the next couple of sessions. <laughs> so we'll catch back up with these guys in a, I don't know, yeah, six sometime, sessions, whatever. Like that. <laughs> Alrighty, well, this was more fun than I expected just talking about a boat trip to be, but yeah, you guys right. got a lot accomplished. So much. Yeah, yeah C Team Go agrees. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to C Team, and then we'll get to D Team with Paisane, so... Yeah. Anyways, I have to run. Uh, this is great. I will talk to you guys later and see you next week. Yep, yep. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Bye. 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 All right. Let's see. Do I have... All uh, right. 650,000 gold. I don't really <laughs> have one that shows... Uh, I got to da, 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 da. We're going to raid. Da, da, going to raid someone. The camera's all messed up. Who should we raid? We're going to raid Claire. <laughs> No, no, you're I'm fine. Uh, slash raid. Celia, Claire. Alright, thanks, Mira. See you later. Bye! As soon as the Let's Peace put this raid out, we'll be going in a few seconds right about now. Oh, I'll be right back one second. Oh my god.